Hi guys, it's Kino. Welcome to another video. So today's pick a card reading is going to be messages about your present and about your future that were meant to find you right now at the time that you are watching this video. We're going to be using the tarot board today, which is always a good time and I'm super excited. But just before we get into it, I want to give a huge thank you to myself for sponsoring today's video. Today's video is sponsored by myself, aka Kinotaro.com, which is where you can find my merch. The merch features our temple, the floating temple that is at the intro of all of our videos. Let me get these braids out of the way. This temple, this temple actually comes from the visualizer for the song Never Coming Down by Maidenfield featuring me, which is the intro song of our videos. There are two versions of this temple artwork. There's the morning sky, which I'm wearing right now, and there's also a beautiful night sky version, and there are versions without text, and as you just saw, there are versions with text on them. So this one says Never Coming Down, the title of the song. And then the night sky one says, my only way to see you is to dream you, which according to you guys is a favorite line of the song. In addition to these hoodies, we also have sweatshirts and everything comes in either white as well as pink and light blue. And then we also have mugs, which I'm literally using this right now. We also have tote bags. I am also using this right now. There's literally stuff in it right now. And everything comes in both the day sky and the night sky version. Another fun little feature about Kinotero.com is that at checkout, you have the option to leave me a question or a message. And I do see them and I can also respond to them. I can send you a little thank you video, which I have done a few times. I feel really shy doing them, but I think I'm getting used to it. So you might get a thank you video from me. My merch has been out for a while and I have received photos and messages from a few of you and it's really really nice to be able to connect with you in that way. So if you'd like to check it out the link is going to be down below in the description as well as in the pinned comment. Kinotaro.com very easy to remember. Huge thank you to Kinotaro.com for sponsoring today's video. <laughs> thank you and now let's get on to the reading! Hi guys, it's Kino. Welcome to another video. So as you can see from the title, in today's pick a card reading, we are going to be taking a look at messages that were meant to find you right now at the time that you are watching this video. So this reading is going to be pretty straightforward. I don't feel like I have much to explain in terms of how it's going to go in the intro of this video. So I think we will just jump right into picking your group. So as you can see, there are four readings for you guys to choose from today and we are going to be using a different tarot deck for each reading and there are also different crystals placed on the deck to help you pick your group. Normally I would show you guys the same card from each deck so that you could also get a feel for the front artwork but today I felt like switching it up and I'm just going to show you a random card from each deck like literally whatever is at the top of these decks we're just gonna flip it over <laughs> and that's gonna be the random card so when you are picking your reading you could be drawn to this back artwork you could be drawn to the crystal on top you could be drawn to the front artwork or if you are familiar with the meanings of the tarot cards you may feel called to um, the actual card that comes up like the meaning of the card, I mean. <laughs> um, whether it's a meaning that you like or you feel like it resonates with your current situation. Um, so there's a few different factors to pick your group. But with that being said, if you do happen to feel strongly called to more than one group today, please feel free to watch both or all of them. I don't want to limit you guys to the messages that you can receive in this reading. But with that, let's give you a close-up look at each of your options. Group number one, your stone is Amethyst, your deck is the Gentle Heart Tarot, and your random card is the Nine of Cups. Option number two, your stone is Ambligonite. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Your deck is the New Moon Tarot, and your random card is the Emperor. Option number three, your stone is Strawberry Quartz, your deck is the Muse Tarot, and your random card is the Empress, interesting. And option number four, your stone is Trolleyite, your deck is the Serpent Fire Tarot, and your random card is the Seven of Cups. 
Okay, so just in case you need a bit more time to pick, these are all your options laid out side by side so that you can compare them and see which one is calling to you the most. As always, take all the time you need to pick. You can pause the video if you need to, and I'm gonna go ahead and get started with number one. Hi number ones, so if you guys chose the Amethyst and the Gentle Heart Tarot, this is going to be a reading all about the messages that were meant to find you. So as you can see, we are using this beautiful tarot board today and there are 10 different spots on this board for 10 different cards to make up your reading. Basically, this bottom row here represents your present. These represent your future. And this card in the middle represents like the divine intervention, the wake up call, the epiphany, basically what propels you from your present into your future. So I just wanna quickly explain what each of these spots will represent and then we will get right into the reading. So it goes like this, current opportunities, current obstacles, tools available to you, natural advantages, the divine intervention or the wake up call. And then we have changes coming your way, future opportunities, future connections, future focal points, and then your final outcome. And this is the first time I said that without looking at the guidebook, so I'm quite pleased with myself. Okay, so let's uh, shuffle your deck and see what messages we have for you. We're gonna start off with the tarot deck that you guys chose and we'll do the reading with the tarot board and then i have some oracle cards set aside for the very end where we will see additional messages and advice from spirit okay group number one we are starting off with group number one's current opportunities. What does group number one need to know about their current opportunities? Wow, so we have the Ace of Diamonds coming through, which is the Ace of Pentacles. And what about group number one's current obstacles? We have the Ten of Swords. Okay. And what tools are currently available to group number one? The Eight of Crystals. And what is group number one's natural advantages? The Nine of Crystals. So this is the Eight and Nine of Wands. For, ooh, okay, so we have two coming out at the same time. For your divine intervention or your wake up call, we have the five of crystals and the page of crystals. So the five of wands and the page of wands. Interesting. And what about changes coming to group number one? The devil. Mmm, okay. future opportunities for group number one. <laughs> okay, we have the Queen of Diamonds or the Queen of Pentacles. Future connections for group number one, we have the Two of Swords. Future focal points, the Four of Diamonds. And finally, the outcome for group number one, the eight of diamonds. Okay, so group number one, this is pretty clearly a reading about success in your career. So we are going to start off at the very beginning with number one. And it's really cool that you guys got a number one card in the number one spot. Um, so for the current opportunities available to you, we have the Ace of Pentacles, which is an amazing card. Um, this really set the tone for the whole reading, but this is a card that represents new job opportunities coming to you, new um, sources of income or an opportunity to increase your income. So there is some new beginning in your career or in your financial situation that is being offered to you. 
And what I also want to say about this is that this is an opportunity for long-term wealth. This comes up later in the reading as well, but right off the bat here, Ace of Pentacles is something um, that is sustainable. Pentacles is very stable. It has a more long-term kind of energy. So this is not only an, an opportunity like to get money, but like to keep making more money in the long term. So like you guys are leveling up in your career. You are, oh, multiplying. The word multiplying came up, like multiplying your finances. So some of you guys could be doubling or even tripling your income. And I, I even feel crazy saying that because like <laughs> that's a very major um, figure, but the word multiplying was coming through very, very strongly. So there's an opportunity for success here. This is like um, job offers, or this is you getting a very green light, a very good sign about a project that you're thinking of moving forward with. Um, this is the universe basically confirming to you that this is going to be um, lucrative, this is going to be profitable for you, um, and the odds are in your favor. Now, when we get to your current obstacle, this is very interesting because we have a swords card which talks about your mind and it also talks about communication. So one way I could definitely interpret this card is that your own thoughts or your own beliefs are getting in the way. And it's very interesting too that I got such a dramatic message about your financial situation improving. That like some of you could be even doubling your income or tripling your income. Like this is a very drastic change in your material situation. And I feel like some of you guys have already like jumped to the conclusion that this is not possible for you. Almost like you're being a little bit closed minded about um, the blessings that you can receive or highly underestimating what you're capable of and the type of life and the type of lifestyle that you can create for yourself. I think it's really interesting too that we have a one for your opportunity and a 10 for your obstacles because this represents like a beginning and an end respectively. So it's like while the universe is trying to offer you a new beginning, maybe something in your mind is telling you that it's already over. Um, so for some of you, this opportunity could be in a field or regarding a project that you have kind of given up on or like you've already decided that it's not possible for you or this could be showing like every time the universe tries to nudge you in this direction, it's like you already have a bunch of reasons of why it won't work. Um, I feel like many of you, the universe has been trying to nudge you in the direction of your passions, in the direction of your dreams, and you've kind of heard that call in the background for quite some time, but you always find like reasons or excuses to not put efforts into it or like I'll work on it later or like um, like procrastination or there's no point in working on it because it's not going to be successful anyway and having a kind of defeatist mindset. You could also be overly perfectionistic so that nothing ever really gets started. Like you're so busy criticizing what you do come up with that nothing ever really gets off the ground or like nothing is good enough for you and you don't you end up like paralyzing yourself. So I feel like for many of you, your own mind is getting in your own way. But swords can also represent communication. So the stories that are surrounding you, what people around you are saying could also be getting in the way. So some of you guys might be surrounded by people who are more pessimistic, people who are more closed-minded, whether they are directly telling you, like, why would you pursue this? Why would you go in that direction? That's not gonna work out. Or if you just indirectly hear them talking about this kind of thing around you, that could be influencing your, your beliefs. So your own beliefs are getting in your way or like taking what others say to heart, I feel like is stopping you from really accepting this opportunity or pursuing this project, pursuing this path that is gonna bring you all of this success. Now, moving forward, we have the Eight of Crystals representing the tools that are available to you. Um, interestingly, this is also a card that can talk about communication. So 
you know, in any moment, we have the power to choose our narrative. And I feel like this is the universe saying, as much as there might be uh, negative or limiting narratives around you, there are also a lot of positive ones. And you have the power of like adjusting your antenna to find those narratives that inspire you and that motivate you. And for some reason in this reading, the Eight of Crystals or the Eight of Wands is really making me think of the internet. <laughs> like that was actually the first thing that came to my mind when this card came out, I was like, oh, the internet. So maybe finding a positive community online or finding content creators that inspire you to pursue your dreams and make you feel like you are capable of manifesting the wealth and the success that you desire, um, that could be really helpful in shifting your mindset, like exposing yourself to more content like this. Um, and also for some of you, it's like we live in the age of the internet you can do anything so like you know like let's just use a writer for an example a writer does not have to wait for a publisher to like come and discover them and back their project and get their book out there we have the internet now so you can just write something and plop it out there and same thing with a musician you don't have to wait for this big label to come and find you and distribute your cds <laughs> or whatever you can just post stuff on social media get your own content out there so there's also something about like um the quickness and the convenience and how easy it is to get your ideas and get your stuff out there with the internet that could be helpful for you guys and especially it's that feeling of like you don't have to wait for someone to come find you to make this happen like there's a lot that you can do right now with your own initiative so positive influences you have at your disposal and also the internet. I'm really, really strongly reading it as that. Also, the Eight of Wands can also talk about manifestation. Um, so manifestation practices could be very, very useful for you guys, especially, um, especially like repeated affirmations. I think it's really interesting that we have like this imagery of parallel lines in both of these cards because it's making me think of someone like writing out lines over and over on a piece of paper um, almost like affirmations or like beliefs that you repeatedly tell yourself but in this one the words are stabbing you they're defeating you in this one they're propelling you upwards and maybe that's a little bit abstract of an interpretation but it's like what you repeatedly tell yourself what you affirm to yourself can make all the difference. Um, some of you guys, if you feel called to, I don't want to like give you homework or anything like that, but some of you could really benefit from like repeating affirmations out loud to yourself over and over um, about what you're capable of and what is possible for you to manifest um, or like repeatedly writing down affirmations over and over. This could be really, really helpful in shifting your mindset because I honestly think mindset is the biggest obstacle for you guys right now, which honestly like changing your mindset is no easy feat i definitely don't want to downplay that but at the same time it is kind of a relief that the one thing in your way is something that ultimately you can control um and you know even the fact that we have like wands and swords here those are like the intangible suits so it's more of like feelings it's more ways of thinking that could help you or um, could get in your way rather than like physical tangible external circumstances messing with you I hope that that makes sense so moving on here we have your natural advantages and we have the nine of wands so there's two very distinct interpretations that are coming through here um, one of them straight up is that you guys are very strong I see this person who has been injured here and I'm like he's still standing and the nine of wands gives me this feeling of someone who's being strong who's being brave who's fighting for what matters to them um so this is spirit saying to you guys that you are very resilient and i feel like it's like this next step for you guys there's some mental blockages when it comes to taking this next step 
but once you take it it's smooth sailing because the nine of wands means like you just have a little bit more fight to put in you just have a little bit more to hang in there and then you will be in the clear and then you will be where you want to be and the other interpretation of this which is interesting is like you guys already have a lot of material to work with that's the way that it's coming through so how can i put like this into a more concrete example let's go back to the writer example because i i just feel like that's pretty easy to illustrate what i'm trying to say and this ace of pentacles that wants to present itself to you is like you publishing a book and it being very very successful so if you already have a lot of material this might be something like well you know if you actually dig through your files you have a story that is pretty close to being done or like if you dig through your software you have a song draft that's act actually has a lot of potential um, and it just needs a little bit more work and then you will have a finished product and maybe in your mind you're thinking like how am i gonna how am i gonna create this whole book how am i gonna make this whole song how am i gonna make this whole online shop and this is like there's materials out there maybe there's like templates out there somewhere where like a lot of the work is already done for you this could either be like efforts that you've put in in the past and you're rediscovering them and you're like wow i actually already have a pretty um a pretty like fully formed work here it just needs a little bit of tweaking or like i said finding templates online it's like you're actually farther along than you think you're actually closer than you think to having a completed product or a completed project and like putting it out there and getting this big break so yeah this is like you just have a bit more to go you're closer than you think um and you're very strong and you're very resilient and you've got this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so interesting. I felt, I don't know if I had a reaction <laughs> when these first came out, but I was like, hmm, this is a very interesting and very clear message as well. Um, I do feel like throughout this whole reading, the messages are quite clear for me. Um, so when you guys are like at the verge of this breakthrough, you might notice that your guides and the universe start to send you signs like very clearly and very literally, almost like undeniable. Um, it happens every now and then that I'm like, okay, this card means this, then this card means this, this card means this, and it's really clear. Um, and this is one of those groups. Like it's just quite clear to me, which is great. Okay, so <laughs> um, we have the Five of Wands and the Page of Wands that came out together. And this is like an epiphany for you that is simultaneously exciting and freeing, but could also be a little bit like annoying, a little bit frustrated. Um, the Five of Wands represents, in this case, it represents competition. The page of wands, pages represent like someone who is younger, less experienced, less developed. The page of wands, it can represent like passion, confidence, going for it, stepping out of your comfort zone, beginning a new adventure. So the way I'm seeing this is like your wake up call is you will see that your competition, aka other people in your field, who are less experienced or who are less skilled or who are less mature or who are less qualified, are going out there and making things happen just from sheer confidence, willpower, and passion. And I think this is really a testament to like, you might be underestimating yourself because I know that you have the material, you have the skill, you have the vision, but it's like the story that you tell yourself gets in your way. I feel like this group that we're dealing with is just really, really strong um, perfectionist. Like you put yourself to such a high standard 
that you like get in your own way. You stop yourself from even coming forward because it's like nothing is ever good enough for you. You hold yourself to this impossibly high standard. But then, and I guess I want to be careful with this wording because I don't think you have to be a certain level of skill or qualified or experienced to be worthy of success. What I'm trying to say here is that there's no reason that all of these other people are allowed to go out and live their dreams and be successful and you're not. There's no reason that, th that these people are worthy of it and you're not. It's like completely, I don't know if arbitrary is the right word, but the only difference is confidence. That's really the only difference. That's like the missing sprinkle for you guys, like the confidence to go out there and do it. So I think you're going to have this epiphany moment um, that's going to kind of give you the, the fighting spirit that you need to tackle this devil because the devil also represents like limiting beliefs. So you're going to be like, screw it. <laughs> Life is short. I'm not going to let my own mind get in the way anymore. Like I said, there's no reason that my competition, like the others in my field, can go out and be successful and I can't. This is like a little dose of healthy <laughs> comparison, I think. Like what, what makes them different? Nothing. I can be confident like them too. I can go out there like them too. Maybe it's not comparison. It's more like being uh, inspired by it. There is no reason that I should doubt my abilities or feel like I don't have enough experience. That's baloney. It is. You guys have what it takes. So this is changes coming your way. I definitely feel like this devil is talking about you guys tackling those limiting beliefs. But another interesting thing about the devil is that it is linked to Capricorn energy and also 10th house energy. So I feel like this is also... Okay, <laughs> I'm thinking of... You know when, like, if you guys have seen the Call Me By Your Name music video at the very end, <laughs> when, when Lil Nas X, like, kills the devil and then puts on the horns and he's like, ooh, and then he, like, grows wings and his eyes are glowing. It's like, you've defeated the devil. You've defeated your limiting beliefs and you have this moment of triumph. Um, and the devil, or like Capricorn 10th house energy, it means you're the top dog now. This is also like someone who's in a position of power, who's in a position of authority. And I just saw 2222 um, and also 77. My camera's at 77%. <laughs> um, that makes me think of lucky number seven. Good luck coming your way. 2222 makes me think of partnerships and mirroring. So I feel like you are going to get on the level of people that you have looked up to and people you have admired. So again, for the writing example, <laughs> like this is you getting on par with your favorite writer. This can really be in any profession. Um, it could also be like, you know, just the top position. So even if it's not necessarily someone you like look up to per se, um, it could be like, you know, you started out here in your company and like you were so used to, you know, I have to answer to this person and now you are this person. <laughs> like the person that you had to look up to figuratively like that or answer to like that, you are now sitting in that position because this Capricorn energy means like you're making your way to the top you're going to be the top dog, you're in the position of power, and you're really owning your power now. Once you realize, <laughs> once you realize that nothing is stopping you, nothing can stop you. Once you get out of your own way, once you get out of these negative beliefs, nothing can stop you. And I think that that's what the devil represents. And then <laughs> makes a lot of sense that the next card that we have for you is the queen of pentacles. This is the opportunities coming your way. And this is another sign of prolonged abundance for you, prolonged wealth for you and prosperity. And I want to be really clear here that wealth and prosperity 
Yes, it talks about the material aspect of life, but it's so much more than that. This is not only you guys being blessed materially, but this is you guys having a really healthy sense of self. This feeling of like, I know why I'm here and I know what my purpose is and I can confidently say that I am embodying that. I can confidently say that I'm out here living and doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And I can confidently say that I've earned my position and I'm worthy in it and I feel comfortable in it. So not only are you in the high position that you're in, but you're really owning it and you're really feeling like you belong there. Um, and really feeling like you're making a positive difference in other people's lives. Abundance can also be like an abundance of love that you have. Um, love for yourself, love for those whom you are serving, as well as an abundance of time and an abundance of freedom. This is really amazing. And I often feel with this card too, like you really have enough abundance to go around and to share with your loved ones. And I feel you guys in a very generous energy when you get here because you feel like you feel so abundant you feel like you have more than enough that you can just give freely without having to worry without having to like calculate um if you guys are the type to like budget very strictly or like check your finances very seriously. I mean, if that brings you joy, you can definitely still do that here. Um, but you're in a place now where you don't have to do that. And I also feel like this speaks to people around you that you can give your time and energy freely to them without having to worry because you know that it's gonna be reciprocated. I feel like that's very important. You know, the same way someone who has a lot of material wealth can be like, oh yeah, like, sure, I can drop a bunch of money here because I know I'm gonna make 10 times that much in the next week. You know, you can just freely give like that. You're doing the same with your emotional energy. You're like, yeah, I can, I can give to this person my time and my energy and I can invest in our connection freely without worrying because I know that it's going to be reciprocated. So it's interesting too that we saw 2222 before because this can also be an indication you're surrounded by such high quality people and such good people that you can just give freely of your time and energy and love without having to worry that you're gonna run out because it's always going to be replenished. And I feel like at this point, you guys have a really strong family unit, um, whether that is like your biological family or like your like family that you created, like your spouse, your children, or your soul family. But I do see a very, very loving family around you and you're very supported. This is your future energy. So then, interestingly, it's just, it's so perfect how they all come together like this. For your new connections, we have the Two of Swords. Um, when the Two of Swords comes out in this position, because this is definitely not the first time that this has happened, it does make me think of someone kind of taking stock of their connections and doing a little bit of like a should I stay or should I go sort of situation. And I think it's quite telling that this comes out next to the Queen of Pentacles where we see you surrounded by a very loving, supportive and reciprocating family unit. Um, again, whether that's blood family or soul family. So there may be some cuts that have been made um, we're freeing ourselves from connections that are not reciprocated, perhaps those back at the beginning who directly or indirectly made us to feel like this Ace of Pentacles energy was not um, feasible for us, was not available to us, those who had that negative or limiting influence on us and did not contribute to our growth or the growth of the connection, those could be being removed so i definitely feel a little bit of that um in this card but with the queen of pentacles here this is definitely a phase of your life where you are very attractive for potential suitors if you guys are single right now 
Um, I feel like this is definitely indicating that several people are going to be romantically interested in you and making a move towards you. Um, but if you're in a happy, committed relationship, this might be like, um, it, like for in the, in the writer example, two different publishing houses, whatever they're called, publishing companies who want to publish your book or like two different companies that want to hire you two different labels that want you to sign with them but it's like an exclusive agreement so it's like i feel like you guys are so attractive to many people right now and you're getting multiple offers but you can only accept one um also if you guys are polyamorous then this is probably not <laughs> um romantic suitors um it's probably more like the oh two companies want to work with you or like two brands want to two brands want to work with you but they're like competing brands so you can't endorse both of them it's like that kind of thing so you will have to this person is blindfolded and it's a crescent moon um that's traditionally what's in this card but every card is a little bit different um for me the blindfold and the crescent moon means you have to go with your gut for this one like you have to go with what your intuition tells you because if you try to analyze the situation and do a lot of research, I'm not saying that's bad, but it's like the more you do that, the more you'll realize, ah, they both sound good. Ah, <laughs> so you just have to go with what your gut is telling you. You just have to go with what feels better. Um, and also, you know, this might sound stressful now, but I feel like by the time this decision making rolls around you're going to be in the queen of pentacles energy which means that you know those kind of thoughts of like what if i make the wrong choice and i miss out what if i lose something those thoughts would not even be in your mind because once you're in this queen of pentacles energy you're like i know that no matter what i choose abundance is going to find me because i am abundance i create the abundance so i could choose either one of these and make it work so you go with what feels better you go with what gives you a better vibe and not necessarily what looks better on paper because actually they both look good on paper so yes you go with your vibes okay so next we have the four of diamonds with new focal points and so this is the third indication for me that this period of success of thriving of abundance is going to be long term for you and I love this card here because for me, this means that you guys are getting out of survival mode. Um, the Four of Pentacles, for me personally, I feel like it's the most rock solid, stable card. Well, maybe also the Emperor. He's pretty sturdy too. But because <laughs> this is four, same as the Emperor, and it's Pentacles. So it's very, very stable. And this was a card I really feel like, okay this wealth this thriving energy that we're in is really here to stay and so a new focal point i'm really thinking of this as like your new mindset your new perspective and you're finally starting to feel like okay this isn't leaving you can finally relax that's what i feel from this because the four of pentacles also means like you're safe Ah, I just saw 33, 33 too. So yeah, continued abundance. And you will, you, your creative fountain will not run dry either. That's another message. Um, I guess this is when it really starts to hit you that like, this is just my life now. You know, this is not like, oh, I made it big and I'm having my 15 minutes of fame or like, you know, I'm just having a month where I'm doing well. This is like where you really start to get settled in your new lifestyle and you're like, oh, damn, I'm actually not going back to my old life or my old lifestyle. I'm not going back to the way things were. I'm not going back to that survival mode or that place of lack or that place of worrying. And you stop worrying about losing what you've gained you're like nope this is the new norm for me like this is the new standard for me you start to settle in your blessings and i really feel this because like if you've been going through it for such a long time when things start to go well it, it's really hard to like wrap your head around at first 
or you're like, oh, this is only going to last for a little bit and kind of like bracing yourself for things to go back or for things to go wrong again. But the four of pentacles is like, no, like you really made it through and this is your new life. And you can be at ease knowing that and get settled here. Like you can unpack your bags, <laughs> you can unpack, put all your stuff here because we're going to be here for a, a while. That's really sweet. Okay, so finally, we have the Eight of Pentacles for your final outcome. And I love that. It's like, we're settling in the new life, but no, we're not, we're not slowing down. <laughs> Make no mistake. <laughs> we're settling into this new life, but we're not slowing down. So you guys are still full of ideas. You are full of like projects that you want to work on or products that you want to create or... Uh, endeavors that you want to fulfill in your company. I don't know if that was even a grammatically correct or vocabularily correct sentence, <laughs> but like you're full of ideas of things that you want to create, that you want to achieve, and you're like working at it nonstop. Like you're in a very productive energy with this Eight of Pentacles. This is someone who is hard at work and they're like just putting it out like hotcakes <laughs> or something. Um, so that actually goes really nicely with that 3333 three, three, three message of like your creative fountain is not depleting, um, your drive is not depleting. You're like, I'm gonna keep working hard and I'm gonna keep supporting this new life. Um, yeah, so I really feel with this Eight of Pentacles, it's really wrapping everything up. Like this is just my new norm now and you're settled into it and you're just, you keep chugging along, quite simply. <laughs> this is your new day to day. This is your new business as usual. And we just keep going. That's the final outcome. We just keep going. Yes. So to finish off this reading now, we're gonna take a look at various Oracle cards from different decks. Um, so to start off, this is the Aphrodite Oracle and your message is sadness. My dear child, I see and feel your pain. Whatever the cause is, take your time to fully heal. It's okay to be only with yourself at this time. Just don't dwell in it for too long. The sun will shine again for you. So this is really interesting to me because there was that message of like, your brain is telling you that it's already over, but the truth is that it's just getting started. The truth is that the best is yet to come. Um, for some of you, what's been holding you back is maybe like the sadness of a previous failure, the sadness of a previous rejection. And this card is saying, whatever, whatever is making you sad, it's okay to feel that pain and it's okay to process it. And this is so weird. Like I was just thinking about this balance yesterday of like, we want to allow ourselves to feel all of our emotions, even the tough ones, even the negative ones. But it's like, how do I know if I'm just like moping? How do I know if I'm just lingering in the sadness? And I feel like maybe we have some lingerers in this group where it's like, it comes a point where you can't let what happened in the past control you anymore. And you can't let this sadness control you anymore. And like at some point you have to like wipe your tears and get up and keep going. So this kind of feels like a little bit of tough love from spirit. And maybe for some of you, if you've been processing this all alone, I feel like it's easier to dwell when you're processing everything by yourself. So this could also be an encouragement. Okay, yes, doorbell is confirming. This is a sign that getting out of your head, getting out, getting out there and interacting with people in your life or interacting with the outside world, this could be very helpful for you guys to stop dwelling in what has made you sad in the past. And it's funny that the confirmation was a doorbell ringing. Maybe like it's time to invite a friend over or go, go visit a friend, go visit a family member, um, spend time with someone you love. And you know, you can talk to them about what's on your mind if you feel comfortable doing that, or you don't have to, but I feel like just being in the presence um, of others and, and 
being a little bit more extroverted and getting out there could really help you to get out of this dwelly, <laughs> dwelly, um, I don't know if moping is the right word, but like lurking in your sadness kind of energy. Next, we have practice. That's funny because the Eight of Pentacles can definitely talk about practice. Um, for some of you guys, practice could be really the key to what is going to make you super confident. Ooh, yeah, because there was that message of like, you already have a lot of material to work with. Um, for some of you, you could be getting back to something that you've put on the back burner like a skill that you've kind of put on the back burner and you're like, oh, I've already forgotten how to do it. Um, and this is saying like, you may be rusty, but with a little bit of practice, you will get back very, very quickly. Um, or a little bit of practice could go a long way in terms of making you guys more confident. Another interpretation though, I really feel like working our way through sadness, working our way through negative emotions and finding happiness is like a skill to be practiced. And so if you don't get it right all the time, if you fall back into negative thought patterns or if you struggle to be happy sometimes, there's no need to beat yourself up because it really is like learning how to think positively or learning how to like have happiness as your baseline that takes practice it is like a skill to practice because you have to train your mind to do that and it can be very difficult depending on your situation and depending on like i don't know how to say it the baseline of your brain the chemicals in your brain i'm not sure how to word it but it's definitely not a walk in the park and it's not just a matter of oh just think positive just be happy just stop thinking about that and it's not fair to expect your brain to be able to do that so it will take some time it will take some practice and it will take gentleness but you can get there um, and next we have bee balm protection from illness. Um, so we have repeating bees. You guys might know I like to point out repeating initials in oracle cards. So the letter B might be a significant initial of you or someone else's first, middle, or last name. It could also be the initial of a significant country, city, establishment, company, something like that. Um, with protection from illness, this is probably just a separate message of the reading um, that you guys are safe. I'm thinking of you and your loved ones are safe. It's a, a Cancer, Moon in Cancer Oracle card from the Moonology Oracle. You and your loved ones are safe. And I think it's the new moon in Cancer. Um, but yes, you guys are safe. This could also be an indicator of good health coming to you in the future, um, as well as like a recovery, a recovery of physical health, a recovery of mental health. Um, if you guys have any like surgeries coming up or any procedures or any treatments coming up, I do think that they will be going smoothly. And with this hummingbird, some of you guys are getting some kind of mobility back because I'm thinking of hummingbirds of like, first of all, how they move really fast, but also they can go in like any direction, like they can even fly backwards, um, which I think is not super common. So yeah, you could be getting back some kind of mobility or speed or fitness, like recovering your fitness or recovering your flexibility. Um, and again, with recovery, it's like for those of you who feel rusty in your craft, with a little bit of practice, you will fully recover whatever you may have lost, whatever performance you may have lost. Um, and then finally, we have enlightened with the number 10. So with this number 10, the month of October could be significant for you guys. Um, or 10 months from now, whichever, whichever is closer. <laughs> if you're watching this and October is coming sooner, then it's October. Um, but if you're watching like in November, or actually that doesn't... If you're watching in November, then 10 months from now is like almost October anyway. So whatever, let's just say October <laughs> is significant. Um, it could also be that somebody is born in October 
Um, and we have, the knowledge you seek is seeking you. There are no distorted versions of reality. Interesting. There are no distorted versions of reality. So it's giving whatever you think is valid, whatever you think you're right. Whether you think you can or can't, either way you are right. And that is somebody's quote, but I, I, I can't remember who it is right now. Whether you think you can or you can't, either way, you are right. And what you want, wants you. The knowledge you seek is seeking you. The opportunities you seek are seeking you. I really like that there's a white flower inside the person's head because white flowers make me think of like purity and rebirth. Um, so I think that this picture really encapsulates what's going on with you like it's a total rebirth of your mindset it's a total new perspective wow okay so group number one these are all the messages that i see for you so i'm going to end your reading here thank you very very much for letting me do this reading for you i hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching and i wish you all the best Please take good care of yourself, stay healthy. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you feel like doing that. And you can also check out my Instagram where I post regular pick a card readings and my music channel. The song that you guys heard at the very start of this video was an original song. So if you're interested in listening to the full version of that song or any of my other ones, my music channel will be linked down below for you as well. Group number one, I'm sending you guys so much love, much love to your spiritual team as well. Once again, thank you so much for being here. I truly appreciate your support and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Hi, number twos. So if you guys chose the Ambligonite and the New Moon Tarot, this is going to be a reading all about the messages that were meant to find you. So we are going to be using this beautiful tarot board today. As you can see, there are 10 spots on this board for 10 different cards. And basically these four cards at the bottom represent your current situation. These cards up at the top will represent your future. And then this one in the middle represents the divine intervention or the wake up call that propels you from your past into your future. So I just want to quickly explain what each of these cards will represent and then we will get into your reading. We'll start with this tarot deck that you guys chose to fill up the spots here and then at the very end of the reading we will take a look at these oracle cards that I have set aside for some additional messages and advice from spirit. So it goes like this. Current opportunities, current obstacles, tools that are available to you, your natural advantages, your wake-up call or your divine intervention, and then changes coming your way, new opportunities, new connections, new focal points, and then the final outcome. So let's get right into it. You guys, I feel, chose a deck that goes really well with the board. Like the color scheme is very nice. <laughs> Group number two. Your current opportunities. What opportunities are currently available to group number two? Okay, so we have the Six of Wands, Current Obstacles, the High Priestess, Tools Available to You, the Five of Pentacles, Your Natural Advantages, The Four of Swords, and your wake up call or your epiphany is represented by the Five of Cups. So then moving into your future for changes coming your way, 
we have the Wheel of Fortune. For woo, future opportunities, we have the Eight of Pentacles. New Connections. Ten of Wands. Your new focal points, two of cups, and then for your final outcome, we have the nine of cups. Oh, that's such a lovely card to finish off with. Okay, so I do want to point out something about how the deck was behaving. Um, when I was shuffling the deck, like when I was doing my first initial, I don't know what it's called, but like the brr, brr, that kind of shuffle, um, the deck was behaving a little bit messy. And normally I actually would not pull any interpretation from this because sometimes I'm just a clumsy shuffler and I normally don't think anything of that. But then when we got into shuffling um, to actually pull the cards, um, I noticed that it was taking a long time for cards to come out and the deck felt a little bit apprehensive and I'm realizing now that there may be many of you who chose this group who are like nervous for the message that is going to come. Um, it's almost like some of you guys are like really praying to hear good news or like praying to hear that things will get better. And there was this kind of feeling of like being nervous of what will come out, being nervous of what you will hear in this reading. And there was also this energy hanging over this group of like, you've been waiting for opportunities for a long time, or you've been waiting for things to move in a positive direction for a long time. And there's a feeling of like confusion or of being lost, like, is there something that I can do to move things in a better direction? Or is this just a storm that I have to weather and, and I just have to wait things out? And if that's the case, like when are things going to get better? So I feel in this group like apprehension or just feeling a bit lost or feeling a bit nervous for what's to come. And I hope that that makes sense. If that resonates with you, you'll probably know the energy that I'm trying to get at, but I just have that vague feeling from the way the deck was behaving. But I want to tell you guys, you have the six of wands as opportunities that are coming your way, or actually, no, this is your current opportunities. So um, this is something that I would say is in your immediate future and that you're already well on your way towards. And the six of wands is victory. For a lot of you, I want to say that what applies to everybody watching this group is that this is you gaining confidence. This is you feeling really good about yourself and being able to trust your mind. And I think that that's simultaneously talking about you being able to trust your intuition, which we get into with the high priestess as well. Trusting your intuition, but also like trusting that your mind will not play tricks on you, feeling like you are in good standing with your mind, feeling like you are in a good place mentally where you can manage if you have intrusive thoughts, you can manage if you have negative thoughts or if you have self-defeating narratives coming into your head. Basically what I'm trying to say is you feeling like you have a handle on your mental health and that your mental health is in a good place and you can say that with confidence like I'm doing well. So some of you guys are really coming out of a dark period like you're coming out of a period where you were really struggling with your mental health and where you had a lot of doubt and this is you finally feeling like you've come out on the other side of that like you've overcome your mental troubles and you're feeling really confident and really proud of yourself. So that's something that applies to everybody. But another meaning of this card can also be victory in the sense of recognition, of people celebrating you, of people being proud of you. And so I feel like for some of you, this is like you're reaching a really big achievement in your life 
with this six of wands here. Like your hard work is being recognized. So some of you guys are receiving some sort of award for your hard work or you are winning something. Like you're winning some kind of prize or you are being selected for something, like you're being selected um, for a certain role, for a certain position, or you're being honored in some way. Um, and I could give so many examples for this. This would be like um, an athlete being selected to play in a tournament or being selected to go to the Olympics or somebody getting the part in an audition or like winning a Grammy or being selected for valedictorian. It's like you're being distinguished. Your efforts are being recognized and so you will stand out from the crowd and be celebrated. Like something that you've created is winning an award or it's being featured. And you're just, I can, I have this visual of you like standing up there and everybody is cheering you on. And what I think is so beautiful about this is that not only are you getting this recognition and your success is being celebrated, but you're going to be in, in a mental space to really receive that and really embrace that. Um, this is something I've been thinking about a lot myself and I was actually watching one of Chloe Taylor's videos recently and she was describing something she had been through where she was living her dream life like she was living out everything that she wanted to manifest but because she was in a bad place mentally like it didn't matter and so I really love to see this for you because it's like you're getting right with your mind you're getting in a good place mentally and emotionally so that when everything you want and everything you've been working towards finally comes into your hands like you're in the right place to actually enjoy it because if you were still struggling mentally you could get everything you want and it wouldn't make a difference it wouldn't bring the positive emotions that you were hoping that it would. It's like you're finding the happiness that comes from within so that when the external things come, you can really enjoy them. Um, I hope that that makes sense. I hope that my wording is, um, is adequate, but I feel like the universe has chosen this order like deliberately, like we're healing ourselves mentally, we're healing ourselves emotionally, and then we get what we want and not the other way around. And perhaps some of you have been in this mindset where you're like, I'm struggling mentally, I'm not happy, I'm not satisfied and I just want to get everything that I want quickly so that I can feel better. But what you would find is that if you got everything you wanted when you were still in this bad place, it would not fix you so to speak or it would not fix your mindset. And I just saw 1111 by the way, that could be a significant number for you guys. Um, but yeah, I feel like this is you mentally healing and really finding confidence and really finding self-love. And it's almost like by the time you're getting these accolades and these recognitions and being celebrated the way you've wanted to, it's like you're going to be in a place where you're actually like, I'm fine either way. Whether I get this award or not, whether I get the part or not, whether I'm selected or not, whether I'm featured or not, whether I get famous or not from what I'm doing, like I'm still gonna be confident. I'm still gonna know that I'm worthy. I'm still gonna know that I'm talented. So it's like, yes, you're getting all of these things that you want, but they're just like icing on your beautiful cake rather than being this thing that you need to so desperately cling on to and it's gonna be the deciding factor in your happiness. You're like, no, I'm gonna be happy no matter what. And it's then that everything you want manifests. No sooner and no later. This is like the order that your higher self and that the universe have decided for you. But with that being said, you guys are already very well on the path to the victory that you are longing for. And I really feel this is you standing out from the crowd and being celebrated. If your goals have to do with reaching a certain level of fame or growing your platform or like expanding the number of people who know about you, um, like you're growing your customers, you're growing your audience, um, this is a really, really good uh, card for that. 
but I see you in the spotlight in the next chapter of your life, you guys are in the spotlight and lots of people are admiring you and lots of people are wishing that they could be like you. Um, not in a way where they're like jealous or comparing themselves, but like they wanna be like you in that they want to live their passions like you. They want to live authentically like you. So you're an inspiration. You're leading by example and you're inspiring others. This is the energy that you're embodying in this next chapter of your life. And I actually just want to jump forward. I'm, I'm kind of going out of order here. Um, but I do feel like the kind of wake up call for you guys or like the turning point in this is that you are reaching something of a rock bottom mentally and emotionally and then things only get better from there when we look at this wheel of fortune you guys may be i actually feel for many of you this might be your current situation like you find yourself at the bottom of the wheel and this wheel is always moving so if you are to keep moving on this wheel you can only go up like you've reached the point in your cycle where it's time for you to go up it's time for you to receive good luck and blessings and you know this is just the nature of life like as we keep living we have ups and then we have downs we have easy times and then we have hard times so you know i can't tell you guys like it's never gonna be hard again you're never gonna have challenges again of course as long as we are all living we will come up with challenges again but I want to tell you that where you are right now, the worst has already passed. It will not get worse from here because it is literally the law of the universe. As you move along this wheel, it must get better from now. You are entering a cycle of good luck. So I feel that you guys, and maybe that's why you were nervous, um, or why many of you I felt were nervous going into this reading. If you're in a bad place, you may have been worrying like, oh my gosh, is it going to get worse from here? Is this bad situation going to continue? And no, it's only going to get better. I feel like this turning point is like a rock bottom of sorts that you guys are at and it can only go up from here. So I really, really want to stress that for you guys. And I even want to jump forward to the nine of cups. I'm kind of going all over the map for this reading. Um, and I don't know, maybe that's symbolic for some of you. Like, life really has not gone the way you expected. It has not gone according to your plan and the sequence of events that you envisioned your life going in. It's maybe felt kind of messy. I think this is the first time I've used the tarot board where, like, I'm just kind of going all over the map. <laughs> um, yeah, but I really want you guys to know you have the Nine of Cups for your final outcome and this is a card that represents your wishes being fulfilled so again everything you want is coming to you but also it represents a state of peace like your stresses have faded away and you can just be calm and you can just relax and you can just enjoy life so like this is what is waiting for you on the other side this is like your light at the end of the tunnel so i feel like you guys are in the dark night right now but the sun has to rise now. Like if you're in the darkest point of the night, it cannot get darker. Like that's not how science works. That's not how the universe works. The sky must start to get lighter and lighter and lighter and the sun will rise for you. So I really, really feel for this group. I feel like you guys have been through it. I feel like you have hit the bottom in your recent past or maybe you feel like you're at the bottom now and I feel like the message that was meant to find you today is quite simply that things will get better for you so um oh and it's so interesting how what the hype yes this is like you guys at the bottom at the bottom of the wheel and you're looking up and you can see you can see the top um it's so interesting you know with the high priestess this definitely means that this group that i'm reading for right now is highly psychic um and i specifically feel like you have a gift of seeing the future because this 
represents your future. This top of the wheel, this peak that you're reaching, this represents your future. And this is what the High Priestess is facing towards. And even though her physical eyes are closed, she can see it. She can see it with her psychic abilities. She can see it with her third eye. So I feel like this is your gift, that you have a very, very clear vision of your future, even though in your physical surroundings, like represented by the closed eyes, in your 3D situation, in your current 3D situation, you may not really have any proof or anything to go off of that things are going to get better like this. But it is your psychic gift that you can see this top of the wheel. I feel like you guys have a very, very clear vision of what you are going to be manifesting. So I think that maybe your obstacle is just struggling to is just struggling to trust in this or it's almost like I feel like the fact that you can see it so vividly it's kind of like a blessing and a curse um I feel like the more vividly you can see your desired reality which is in your future it's like the more you feel that contrast between your desired reality and what you're currently going through. And that could create a lot of discomfort and frustration and sadness as you long for this future. So I feel like that could definitely be an obstacle. Um, but also, the High Priestess represents a receptive energy, but in some cases, this could be interpreted as a passive kind of energy. And I have seen this in readings sometimes where because you can so vividly visit your future and visit your desired reality like in your dreams, in your meditations, in your visualizations it's like your psychic gifts are so strong that you could almost like put yourself there like you could have really really vivid visions and dreams and 5D experiences with what you're trying to manifest and sometimes, and if, if, this, if this doesn't resonate for you, please feel free to disregard me, but there could be a few people, because I have seen this before, where it's like, rather than using your 5D experiences as fuel to create that which you desire in the 3D, it becomes like this place to escape if that makes sense. Um, if I can give an example for this, let's say somebody has gotten into like a fight with um with a counterpart and they're in separation now but their higher stuff their higher selves have a beautiful relationship in the 5d and this high priestess who is highly psychic can access that at any time. She can telepathically communicate with her counterpart's higher self. She can see her counterpart in her dreams. She can vividly feel like she's there with them and she's feeling that love and she's feeling that warmth. She can receive messages from them all the time. So she could use these beautiful 5D experiences as inspiration to act in the 3D and make things right with her counterpart to reach out, to say, let's talk things through, to say, I'm sorry, um, to work past the conflict. Or if she's in a more negative headspace, those vivid 5D experiences could make her frustrated or sad because the 3D looks so different. And then as a result, she's like not seeing the 5D experience as something she can manifest in the 3D, but just like a world to escape to because the 3D situation is so um, dissatisfactory, if that makes sense. So there, there might be a little bit of that going on with this group where it's like you've separated what you experience in the 5D and what you can, you are allowed to experience in the 3D or what you can manifest in the 3D. It's like you've created a divide between the two of them rather than realizing like these 5d experiences are actually showing me what's to come they're actually showing me what i can create so you know with this coming through in the obstacle part um it, it could be showing that some of you have entered into a passive energy or it's like yes you have the psychic insights but you've kind of given up on 
like implementing them in the 3D or something like that. Um, so moving on here, for the tools that are available to you, we have the Five of Pentacles. And this is very interesting because the Five of Pentacles talks about material lack. Um, and you know, I have to do a little bit of a rough translation with this, not a literal translation. Um, when we see that material lack is your tool, the way this comes through to me is that your most valuable tools are not material in nature. It's not, or it's not like, oh, if only I had this money or these resources or this equipment or these connections, I could achieve my goals. And I'm not saying that those don't play a role or that they're not important, but this card is clearly showing that those are not your most valuable tools. They can certainly help, but they do not make or break your chances at success. And if you guys are thinking that way, that could be something that is an obstacle. And what we're very clearly seeing here is that your biggest, most valuable tool to success is confidence in yourself, is trusting in the vision that you see, and knowing that you have the power to act on it. And I want to tell you guys, no matter what you are struggling through right now, you do have the power to change this. Everything that you need to change your situation is within yourself. And it's like the more, the more stress you put on outside things or on material resources to be your key to success, it's like you are disempowering yourself. You are your most powerful tool. Your mindset is your most powerful tool. And I think many of you guys needed to be reminded of that. And then for, for your natural advantages, we have the four of swords. Are there four snakes? Yes, <laughs> there are four snakes here. Um, this is making me think, mm, this is making me think of a soul connection in this context. And this is really not like a traditional, wow. This is really not like a traditional meaning of the four of swords, but you see how like there's four snakes and there's two snakes that are intertwined down here. And there's two snakes that are intertwined up here. And are they? Yes, and these images are mirroring each other. It's just like the same image flipped. And I feel like there's been a lot of like above and below imagery, like hitting the bottom of the wheel and moving back up. This is giving me like as above, so below energy. I feel like you have a strong connection in the 3D and it's mirroring a strong connection that you have in the soul world. And the crescent moons on the snake's heads are also making me think of psychic gifts because crescent moons for me represent intuition. So to have that like right in your head, it's like, okay, you're psychically gifted. Um, I feel like you, <laughs> the word buddy system is coming to my mind. I feel like there is a very significant soul that you incarnated with as a buddy system. Like you came down to earth together, almost like to check on each other, to watch over each other, but you're very, very strongly connected both in the 3D and in the soul world. I will say I am not getting any, any information as to whether this is like romantic or like platonic. This could be like a sibling. It could be a parent-child relationship. It could be a, a spouse relationship. It could be a friendship. Um, but there's a soul that you share a very, very close bond with. And it's like, you know how twins, like human twins, not twin flames, <laughs> but like twins, they say like twins have this kind of like weird psychic connection. They can feel each other's pain. And I think even if they were kind of leading separate lives, if they reunited, they would still be really similar. And it's appearing to me that you have this kind of connection here on this earth. Some of you have met this person already, some of you haven't, but it doesn't matter. 
because you're very closely connected. And I feel like even if you're separate, whatever's going on in your lives, it's like it directly affects each other. And this is something that actually works to your advantage. And I think it's kind of like the reason for your psychic abilities because it's like, it's almost like you share a well of knowledge or you share a well of experiences. Um, it's so it's so abstract and it's a little bit hard to explain, but like, um, okay, this is a very, very simplified example. But let's say you're in a sailboat <laughs> and you've never been in a sailboat before, but like you kind of just intuitively figure out how to move the things around to get where you want to go. It's like this counterpart's experience of being a sailor or of driving a sailboat before it like comes out on the other side. So it's really like you share a channel of information, you share a channel of experiences. And so the things that you know a lot about, the things that you have experienced like firsthand, they would come to the counterpart as downloads. They would come to the counterpart as intuitive hits. So I guess it's like whatever person A learns through doing and learns through experience, person B gets us like little flashes of intuition because it's in the same bank. That's so, it's so weird, but like that's the kind of connection that you share. So you have like double the street smarts, you have double the insights, you have double the intuition because of the buddy system. Yeah. <laughs> Um, please let me know in the comments if this resonates for you because I feel kind of crazy describing this but one of your advantages is the buddy system and maybe like you're down here right now and your buddy is up here right now and they're like calling to you from the place of good luck from the place where things get better they're calling to you from the light at the end of the tunnel and they will lead you up here and then when they're going through it you will call to them from the light at the end of the tunnel and it's like you help each other like this that's so cool okay so we talked about this cards five and six where it's like you're hitting a rock bottom and now your luck is getting better now we move to here which is your future opportunities and i remember this very well when i was shuffling the deck this card felt very excited to come out. I believe it like whoop, like it it hopped out very gleefully. It jumped out. The energy felt very, very excited. And I want to reiterate this again because I, I feel like this was something that came out around the beginning of the reading is that you guys really have so much power to create your own opportunities. I feel like many of you are in this energy right now where like you're waiting for opportunities to come to you but in the future you are going to be creating all of your opportunities um and i can use myself as an example um well it's not exactly the same because i ended up in a different career but when i was like in my oh wait no it's kind of the same anyway when i was like 20 and in my early 20s um, I really wanted to be a singer and you know, I still love singing and I still make music but I wanted to be like, you know, a famous singer who's like famous, <laughs> you know, like a pop star or something like that and I, you know, had it in my head I cannot do music and I cannot be successful in music unless I like join an agency so unless I get someone to, you know, come and accept me and, and help me so I would like audition to all these places or like I would join agencies and then just wait for offers to come to me I felt like someone has to come help me like someone has to allow me like give me permission to be successful and give me permission to follow this path so I was just kind of passively waiting for my like big break to come um, and it didn't <laughs> but look at me now I'm just making my own stuff I'm making my own videos, I'm making my own music, I'm just like doing it all by myself and I 
would not have had it happen any other way. Like looking back, I'm really happy that I did not join any company or any agency because I feel like that would have taken away a lot of my freedom. Um, and the scary thing is that when I was that age, I didn't care. I was like, oh yeah, I'll just do what they tell me and I'll like change my music and change my image or whatever because I just wanted like, I don't know, I wanted the, the fame or I wanted the validation or whatever. Um, I hope that that story had some meaning and that it could apply to your situation, but it's, it's from, it's about shifting from a mindset of like, I'm waiting for my big break to come to me. I'm waiting for my big offer to come to me to like, I will create my own success. I will create my own opportunities. And the ironic thing is that when you do do this, offers and opportunities will come your way. But I feel it's like you're moving from a more passive energy when it comes to your opportunities. You're moving from a more passive energy to like taking agency and saying like, I am the opportunity. <laughs> like we talked before, I am the tool that is available to me. I am my most valuable asset. And yes, it's amazing to receive help and it's amazing to receive resources, but that does not make or break your chances at success. So I feel like this is you in an empowered energy. And I love again, how these butterflies are flying upwards. And I love that you're freeing yourself. And like, there's really this feeling of upward motion of coming out from the dark tunnel and you're standing out from the crowd. Now, for your new connections, and I think I want to read these together because this is new connections and this is new focal points. Um, in terms of future connections, oh my gosh, I just noticed. Um, this card also has a vibe of like something is standing out from the crowd, except for in this case, I am reading this as sticking out like a sore thumb. These cards, when it comes to relationships, could not be more opposite. The Two of Cups represents a relationship that is beautiful and reciprocated and healthy and mutual. The Ten of Wands represents a relationship where one person is pulling all of the weight. It is not reciprocated and it really puts a heavy burden. And I feel like in many cases, this is you that is carrying the burden. This is you that is not being reciprocated. And so what this is showing here is that certain connections in your life that have not been reciprocating to you are going to stand out like a sore thumb. And I feel like this really has to do with you guys like healing your mental health and finding your confidence. Um, like when someone isn't paying you the respect you deserve, like it, it's like it stands out so obviously now because you don't have it in you to just like make excuses for people and you don't have it in you to pick up responsibilities that were never yours and like to pull weight in a connection that is not yours to pull and to show up for someone who's not showing up for you. It's like you literally can't do that anymore because it's so obvious. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't treat myself this way. Me who loves myself, I would never like treat myself this way. I would never like talk to myself like this or neglect myself like this. I would never expect this kind of emotional labor from myself. So I know that you're not treating me right. So if at the time you're watching this video, there are certain connections in your life where you're wondering if you should stay or go, or like, is this connection healthy or not? Is it blurry? Um, which I think it's very okay to ask yourself those questions. I am not the type of person who says like, if you even have to ask yourself, then it's not, uh, like it doesn't always work that way because when we're struggling to trust our intuition, like you could have the most wonderful person in your life, but if you 
like have trust issues or it, like if you struggle to trust your intuition or if you struggle to trust other people, you could still be questioning yourself. Like, is this connection okay? Is this connection healthy? Um, so I think it's very valid to have those doubts and just the mere fact that you're asking yourself that, I don't believe that it necessarily says anything about the connection. You might disagree with me, but that's just how I see it. Um, but anyway, all of that to say, connections that are good for you and connections that are not good for you will become very, very obvious at this point. And I do feel like some connections would be ended here. We do have the number 10, which can talk about endings. I feel like some one-sided connection is coming to an end. So some kind of like a love interest who was really not reciprocating or a friendship that was very imbalanced. Um, it could even be a family relationship, which I hope it's not because I feel like those are the hardest relationships to set boundaries or to cut off. Um, at least I think so. Um, but I feel like in terms of new connections, it's actually like connections, some connection is coming to an end. And I think it may be just one, like one significant connection. But after this, with new focal points, we have the two of cups and it makes a lot of sense to come out after this because it's like, I'm only going to focus on connections that are healthy and reciprocated and that make me feel good because like we mentioned before, this new chapter of your life is all about you feeling good about yourself and feeling confident. So yes, no one, no one likes going through a 10 of wands connection, but it really does make you appreciate these beautiful two of cups connections even more. And I think it's no mistake that there's yin and yang here. Like you can't have one without the other. You need to experience the darkness to appreciate the light. You need to experience the 10 of wands to appreciate the two of cups. It's this feeling of like, unreciprocated connections, unrequited love, or, you know, less healthy connections. Yes, it sucks to go through them, but we all experience this. And there's nothing wrong with you if you've experienced this. It's just part of being a human and learning how to navigate relationships. And it makes you love and appreciate these connections even more. And I feel like, I definitely feel like this will be you growing a deeper appreciation for your existing friendships, for your existing romantic relationship, for your existing family connections. So existing connections are really, really deepening um, their intimacy and, and level of appreciation. But if you guys are single and you're looking for your soulmate, if you're looking for your romantic counterpart, there's definitely a very, very, very strong indication of this. Two of Cups is soulmate energy. This yin yang is counterpart energy. We definitely had counterpart energy here. Um, some of you guys, maybe you or your counterpart is a year of the snake person, which is 2001, 1989, 1977, 1965, and you know, going back 12 years like that. Um, Definitely take that as a confirmation if you have someone in mind who's born in those years or if you are um, But yeah, I feel like this is a very very strong possibility of manifesting a romantic soulmate if you are single and then finally We've already spoken about this, but your final outcome is the nine of cups Which again is all of your wishes coming true and again we have well probably this is just like a repeating theme of this deck but remember this represents Oh, that's actually really, really sweet. Like we've spoken throughout the reading of this representing like your desired reality. This image represents your desired reality, the future that you're dreaming of. I wonder if anyone has a tattoo that looks like this or like if you've been considering getting a tattoo, maybe this would be like a nice, a nice one for you. Cause I feel like this symbol um, represents like your dreams coming true. And I also like all of the cups coming together with this because we had that message of you guys being like celebrated and being admired. And I'm thinking of this as like a bunch of people raising their glasses to like toast to your success and toast to your victory. 
I also just heard engagement. So at the end of all of this, some of you guys might be getting engaged or getting married. Hmm. <laughs> but yes, Nine of Cups is wish fulfillment and it's living peacefully, living contentedly, being satisfied with what you have. Um, I just heard like out of the rat race. Like you're not constantly feeling like I have to do more, I have to accomplish more, I have to get farther and farther. I feel like at this point you're living slowly. You're living slowly and you're not putting pressure on yourself. And rather than constantly looking for the next thing, you're just appreciating what you have in the present moment, which also is like a testament to your immaculate mental health. I feel like you're just doing so well mentally and emotionally in this next phase of your life, which is amazing. And I hope that any nerves you had coming into this reading have been appeased because everything just looks really good. This board looks really good. The color scheme is like, mwah, it's beautiful. <laughs> um, everything is linked down below, by the way, if you guys like these decks. Um, but with that, let's finally take a look at your oracle cards to see the last messages and advice from spirit. So to start off, we have the Aphrodite oracle and we have wait. My dear child, this is not the right time to act upon whatever you wanted to initiate. Wait for a little. Soon you will know more. Mm. This is very key because we have spoken about taking action in this reading, but it's very important that we take inspired action and that we are not just taking action for the sake of acting or because we feel like we have to because then we are acting from a place of resistance and so i feel like this is saying wait for the inspiration to strike wait until you feel that urge and then go for it however even though this card says wait if you're watching this reading right now and you already feel the urge and you already feel the inspiration i would say go for it and I'm really being called to the fact that this card is red. Woo! You hear that engine? I think it, it must have been a motorcycle or something. I said go for it, and then there was like, like a, like a, you know, a freaking motorcycle <laughs> engine. Um, sorry, that was really hard for me to say because I was distracted by a billboard outside. Um, I was just talking about the red color of this card and then there's like a big red billboard outside and the only thing I can read on it because it's like blocked a little bit is, um, well, it literally means like eight princes. I don't know if that's relevant to anyone, but um, maybe some of you guys will have eight dogs and they will be like your little princes. <laughs> or eight is the number of abundance as well. Um, but yeah, I don't know, eight princes. Um, it's the name of a place, but that's what it means. So, uh, yeah, the red color <laughs> was really standing out to me because it makes me think of the root chakra. So I think that when it's time for you to act, like you will feel it in your root chakra, which is basically like deep in your gut, like really, really deep in your gut, in your lower abdomen, you might get a feeling there. You know when you're like really excited or like giddy or nervous and you feel like cramps there, like maybe you feel like you have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's kind of gross, but like if you feel sensation in there, that could be like, ooh, the passion's revving up, like we're getting anxious, like the good kind of anxious, it's time to go. Okay, so next, woo, anything you want to find, it's out there somewhere. Mm, this is like a call for you to go out there and find it rather than just sitting and waiting for stuff to come to you. Um, and then we have Orchid with Fertility. Um, for those of you who have been trying to have a child or a loved one around you is trying to have a child, this is very, very good news for you guys. Um, orchids could be a significant flower for you guys as well. And fertility can also have a more metaphorical meaning where basically the seeds that you're planting or the intentions that you're setting are coming to fruition. Um, the camera right now is like focusing on this square right here. 
like there's a white square that keeps appearing here with the card of fertility, with the card of your luck changing, with the card of victory, <laughs> and with the card of your psychic abilities. This square is being focused on really like, it did it again. The camera really wants to focus here. Um, and then finally, we have self-awareness. Okay, this is you guys having an accurate perception of yourself in the mirror. And I actually feel like this is speaking about something physical. Like you guys look in the mirror and the version of yourself that you see is not accurate. Like you see someone who has all of these flaws and who needs to change or who needs to cover up. Um, you are not seeing yourself accurately. This could also be personality wise for some of you, but I'm getting the feeling that you are underestimating yourself let go of your egoic attachments, your evolution, your evolution comes with release. Um, it feels like you guys have gotten into a habit of like judging yourself based on superficial things or based on material things. And I'm not saying that you are a superficial or material person. In fact, I think you are quite the opposite of that. But I just think as a product of our culture, as a product of our society, maybe you have in some ways unconsciously inherited this like evaluation system that we seem to have that focuses very heavily on looks and on status and on material wealth and on like popularity and followers and all of that kind of stuff. Um, they can be great, like th things like followers and material wealth and stuff, they can be great tools to like measure our progress, but they are not standards to determine our worth. Because even as your progress or your success has ups and downs, your worth stays the same. You are always worthy. When you're doing really, really well, you're worthy. And when you're doing really, really crappy, you're still worthy. And sometimes we conflate the ups and downs of our success, the ups and downs of our physical appearance, um, the ups and downs of our money to ups and downs of our worth as a person. And that is inaccurate. And I feel like this is something that you guys are breaking here. Your evolution comes with that release. Mm -hmm. Hi, it's me from the future. I just wanted to mention something because I did this for group one and then I made a mental note like, okay, I'm going to check on this for all of the groups. And then I just, I was in a silly mood and I forgot, but I want to pay attention to the number on this card as a potential time frame for you. So we have the number six here. This could be indicating that the next six months are going to be very significant for you guys, um, as well as the month of June. So whenever you guys are watching this, the next six months or the next coming month of June, or both um, will be significant for you. And actually at the time that you're watching this video, if the month of June falls within the next six months, then that's gonna be like a hot spot. That's gonna be the most um, important time. So yeah, back to the other me. These are all the messages I have for you guys. So I'm gonna end your reading here. Um, this is my first time having and using embligonite i wonder if like i don't know the energy of this group just felt kind of different i don't know if that's like you guys are just different or i don't know maybe this crystal just makes me weird but <laughs> thank you very much for embarking on this journey with me and thank you very very much for letting me read for you i hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching and i wish you all the best Please take good care of yourself, stay healthy. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you feel like doing that. And you can also follow me on Instagram where I post regular pick a card readings that will be linked down below in the description as well as in the pinned comment. And I also have a music channel. The song that you guys heard at the very start of this video was an original song. So if you are interested in hearing the full version of that song or any of my other ones, the music channel will be linked down below for you as well. 
Group number two, I'm sending you guys so much love and much love to your spiritual team as well. Once again, thank you so much for being here. I truly appreciate your support. And the camera is still focusing on this freaking square. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Hi, number threes. So if you guys chose the strawberry quartz and the muse tarot, this is going to be a reading all about the messages that were meant to find you. So for today's reading, we are going to be using this beautiful tarot board. And as you can see, there are 10 different spots on this board for 10 different cards. Basically, this bottom row here represents your current situation. These cards up top represent your future. And then this one in the middle represents like your wake up call, your divine intervention, which propels you from your present into to your future. So I just want to briefly explain what each of these spots will represent in your reading and then we will get right into it. We're going to be using of course this deck that you guys chose to fill in the board and then at the very end of the reading we will take a look at these oracle cards which I have set aside for additional messages and advice from Spirit. So without further ado let's get into our reading for group number threes. And no, I have to explain what the spots mean. So it basically goes like this. We have current opportunities, current obstacles, tools available to you, natural advantages. And then like we mentioned before, this is your wake up call. This is your divine intervention. And then we have changes coming your way, future opportunities, future connections, future focal points, and then your final outcome. Okay, now we're going for real. <laughs> Group number three. I'm excited to use this deck. I really, really love this deck, but I feel like I haven't used it in a while. I have way too many tarot decks now, and I try to use them all equally, but it's hard. It's hard to give them all the spotlight they deserve. Okay, let's give you one last nice shuffle. <laughs> Come on now. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Group number three. So I just saw 222, by the way. You've got this. I just heard you've got this. You're doing great. Okay, let's pull a card. Okay, for your current opportunities, we have the page of inspiration. This is the page of wands. Your current obstacles the nine of voices or the nine of swords. Interesting. Tools available to you. The six of materials or the six of pentacles. Aren't these cards just gorgeous? Okay, and then your natural advantages. We have the two of emotions or the two of cups. Okay, your wake up call or your divine intervention or your turning point. We have the eight of voices. For changes coming your way, We have the five of inspiration, so the five of wands. New opportunities. The moon. New connections. page of materials or the page of pentacles, new focal points, strength, and the final outcome is the two of materials or the two of pentacles. 
Okay, so a couple things I'm picking up on. I feel like the universe likes to keep you guys guessing. <laughs> or you've just been in a chapter of your life where you feel like the universe is being a little bit a little bit cryptic, a little bit sneaky, a little bit hard to predict. Um, I don't know where that vibe came from, but I just really got that feeling strongly when I was shuffling the cards. Um, and then the other thing is that I would not be surprised if you guys are artists of some kind or if you guys are creative or if you're trying to really do your own thing and forge your own path in this world. Just the overall vibe of this deck, I feel like if you choose the Muse Tarot, you're like a very talented creative. You guys were drawn to the Empress card. Oh my gosh! Okay, I just remembered. Thank goodness. <laughs> I filmed the intro, oh gosh, like was it yesterday? I don't know. Time is a blur and at this point in my life it takes me several days to film a video so it just kind of time, the concept of time is weird. Um, but I remember being like really surprised when I was showing the options because you guys are group number three, your random card was the Empress, which is also number three, and as I was showing the random card, um, I had been filming for 3.33, like it hit the three minutes and 30 seconds mark as I was showing you group number three's option of card number three. So threes might be a significant number for you guys. I just heard like your blessings will come in threes. Um, so like you will have a good luck strike of some offers or opportunities or big successes coming to you and it will happen in threes. Like for example, you get a job offer, um, you get your dream home and you get into a new relationship and it like it all happens one after the other um you are definitely entering into a period of good luck which i'm really happy to see um but the number threes they're all about creativity they're all about expansion manifesting your desired reality and also for you guys i'm getting the vibes of collaboration and co-creation. This could very well be speaking to you co-creating with the universe, um, but I also think you'll be collaborating with humans in this next chapter of your life, um, coming together with like-minded people to create something beautiful. And yes, I'm just getting the feeling that every now and then the universe likes to sprinkle little surprises in your path. Like, <laughs> she's definitely working with you to get to your desired outcome, but she might have some little tricks up her sleeve of like <laughs> how to get there and the timing of everything. I feel like you guys are really in a chapter of your life where you will need to remind yourself like trust the process and trust divine detours because the universe wants to like surprise you or the way the universe is working in your life is going to be kind of unpredictable at this point in your life and i feel like even that is a little bit of a cryptic message but if this is something you're experiencing right now you will know what i'm talking about um, but yes the key is to just remember to embrace the unpredictable and trust divine detours um, and look at your life like a work of art and not just as like a checklist a list of things to complete or a, a straight line from point a to point b allow for adventure, allow for spontaneity. That's a message for you guys as well. Okay, so let's finally <laughs> look at the cards that appeared here. To start off with your current opportunities, we have the page of inspiration and actually immediately my eyes are going to these two cats. If you guys have been thinking of getting a companion animal, um, this is your sign. This is your sign to go for it. Um, for those of you also who have companion animals who have crossed over to the other side, they want you to know that they are with you at this time. Um, and actually, even those companion animals who are currently incarnate with you, they are with you in spirit. Like Their higher selves watch over you. And your companion animals are saying like, oh man, like if I could talk to you, <laughs> they would love to talk to you and let you know how much they love you and how much they care for you. Um, 
if there's anyone out there who chose this group, like you wonder what your pets think of you or like, it, you know, if, if they like you, if you're doing a good job being their human, like they want you to know how much they appreciate you and how much they love you. And I know that that doesn't have anything to do with the current opportunities message, but I just really needed to let you guys know that. Um, but yeah, it could be an opportunity to like adopt or rescue an animal coming to you soon. Um, but now, to talk about the actual meaning of the card, another thing that's coming to me is that this could also be a confirmation or like a green light message regarding a certain fire sign in your life. So if you have a person of interest who is Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius, maybe you're interested in dating them, maybe you're interested in working with them or befriending them, this is basically like your green light. Like, yes, this is going to be a very positive connection. Yes, this is a person of significance in your life. Yes, you should go for it. So you should pursue this person or you should um, continue to have hope about this connection. However, the message resonates for you. Um, I'm getting really, really positive vibes about a fire sign in your life. Um, and for those of you who are trying to manifest um, soulmates or soul family, this could also be a hint that this person will be a fire sign, um, especially Leo, because we do have... Um Oh my gosh, that's really sweet. We do have the strength card here, which represents Leo energy. Um, and okay, yeah, let me jump forward a little bit. <laughs> I was doing this in group number two as well, like not really going very strictly in order. But this card represents your new focal points. And I feel like this is representing, this lion is representing like a significant person in your life. Um, and this is you, <laughs> um, this is you sitting on their um, head, but Sorry, that was like an innuendo, I'm sorry. But maybe not, maybe you're welcome if this is someone you're attracted to. But if it's not that kind of connection, just, sorry, that's awkward, please ignore me. You are figuratively on them because they're giving you a higher perspective. It's like when you climb up a mountain and you can see from a bird's eye view, you can see things higher. Basically, I'm seeing that this is someone who is lifting you up and this is someone who is offering you a new perspective of the world, an elevated perspective of the world. So being around this person makes you feel more optimistic and it makes you feel more strong. It makes you feel like you can tackle anything. Um, I'm thinking of that scene in Lion King where Mufasa and Simba are like sitting on top of Pride Rock and I think Mufasa says something like everything the light touches is our kingdom. So it's like this person lifts you up and then says like everything that you can see from here is yours. So it's like a really supportive, uplifting and loyal presence in your life. They make you feel like you can do anything and it's likely vice versa, but it's like you know, also like they lift you up, like they give you a lot of strength. And I love that this is coming out in your new focal points because it means like you have a new perspective of what you're capable of and a new perspective of what you can accomplish. And I feel like you stop playing small. And I think there's some connection here because the Page of Wands also believes that like anything is possible. I can achieve anything with my sheer willpower, with my sheer passion and with confidence in myself. Um, and I, I almost feel like this card is saying your opportunities can be anything. Like the opportunities that are available to you is literally anything your heart desires. Like you have the pen and paper in your hand right now to write the script of the life that you want. You guys came or you were drawn to the Empress for a reason. I really believe that because the Empress is an archetype who can manifest anything she desires effortlessly like that divine creative energy just pours out of her and i feel like the message you need to hear today is the loving reminder from the universe that like you hold the pen and paper for your life sometimes we just need that reminder because i don't know we get tired and we get an autopilot and we're just going through the motions of our life and i think maybe you guys needed that reminder of like if there's something in your life that is not satisfying you anymore, that is not doing it for you anymore, you have the power to change that. And if there's something you're passionate about, or even, heck, even something you're just curious about, you have the right to explore that. 
without worrying about like, where is this gonna lead? Is this really my long-term destiny? I feel like this group needs more spontaneity. Like if you have a whim to try something new or if something has just tickled your fancy or if you're curious about something, um, try it and see how it goes. You know, the page is young and the page is full of potential. I feel like your future is full of potential. It can be anything. You can make it into whatever you want. Like your future right now is not set in stone. I feel like this is your future hanging above you. This like amorphous blob, but it's so colorful. It's so full of potential. And you are the one who gets to sculpt this into whatever you want. So, wow, that was like a lot <laughs> all at once, but basically, um, companion animals are with you and they love you very much and this is your sign to get a new pet if you have been thinking about that um, fire signs in your life good sign <laughs> um, and the universe wants you to know that you have the power to create anything you want and you needed to be reminded of that because some of you have just gotten into maybe this kind of passive mode into this autopilot mode and you needed to be reminded of your ability to change the script to start anew, to manifest whatever you want. Now, interestingly, we get into this nine of voices, which is your current obstacle. And this is the nine of swords, which talks about overthinking. It talks about worries. It talks about anxiety and expecting the worst. So, and this is, I think this is similar to group number one, but what we're seeing here is that your biggest obstacle right now is your mindset. So this group, this might be like the worrying bunch, the group who tends to overthink. And, you know, obviously these two energies are quite incompatible because this energy is saying like, be spontaneous. If you, if you have a whim towards something, just go for it. Just try it. When you get the urge to do something new, just do it. But the Nine of Swords sits there and overanalyzes everything. So, you know, if this Page of Wands got the urge to, like, take, take up a painting class, the Nine of Swords would be like, oh, but... I don't know if that's going to get me anywhere. What if I do it and I'm not good at it? Or what if I quit in three months? Or what if it makes my schedule too busy and then I get overwhelmed? What if I don't make friends at the painting class and I get awkward? And like, which type of painting should I go for? Like watercolors or oil painting or sketching, which is not a type of painting. Is painting really even the right thing to do? Should I be doing something else? What if everybody in the class is younger than me and they're all like way younger and way better than me and I'm like the worst in the class? Oh, I shouldn't do it anyway. I'm not, it's not like I'm going to become a painter, blah, blah, blah. And you know, this is what the Nine of Swords does. It just expects the worst and brings up everything that could go wrong and talks you out of things. And you know, that is very incompatible with acting on a spark or acting on a whim because the page of the page of not page of swords <laughs> um, Although for some of you this could have to do with like learning a new language Page of swords always makes me think of that for some reason or like taking up a digital skill like digital art or video creation music production online courses something online. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Oh, right. The page of wands or the page of inspirations, its vibe is like, just do it. Just do it. Just go for it. So I feel like this tendency of yours to analyze everything and to overthink everything and to think of everything that could go wrong um, will get in your way at this time. You have this way of talking yourself out of leaving your comfort zone, even if you don't like your comfort zone. Like your brain has some way of keeping you there, which I think is getting in your way. Another thing that came to my mind with this Nine of Swords is stress dreams. You guys might be having stress dreams or having nightmares. Um, 
And as ironic as it sounds, I think it might be time for you guys to like face, to do the very thing that you're having stress dreams about. To like repair, repair the wound. And I can actually use myself as an example. For the longest time, I had stress dreams about school because when I was in high school and university, I really didn't like school. I wasn't on top of anything. Um, like my mental health was not good. So like it wasn't a nice time for me. So I had stress dreams like for years and years and years until recently where it would be like um, I'm back in high school. It would be like me, like me at my current age, but like there was a mix up and I never got enough credits to finish high school and I have to go back now at my age and the exam is today and I don't know anything. Like I don't know where my locker is. I haven't read any of the books that we have to write an essay about. Like I have no idea what I'm doing. And then I wake up and there's always this intense relief of like, no wait, I actually graduated university. I don't have to go back to school. And so, you know, my first thought is like, I'm having these stress dreams because I hated school and I need to like run away from it. You know, I always felt that relief of like, thank God I'm not in school anymore. Well, <laughs> fast forward and I actually am in school now, but I stopped having the stress dreams. So it's like by facing the very thing, I feel like I'm doing it over and I get to recreate my relationship with it. And, you know, I'm in a better place mentally. I'm more responsible now, probably just because I'm older and I'm like enjoying my experience and I feel like I'm doing it right. And I don't have these stress dreams anymore. So it's like you need to reteach your brain. This thing that is you subconsciously think is stressful, it's not. Like you can repair your relationship. So I don't know, maybe some of you guys have stress dreams about public speaking. Like that you're in front of a crowd and you need to give a speech and you're terrified. And you wake up and you're like, oh, thank goodness I'm in my bed. I don't have to public speak those stress dreams might be indicating to you it's time to face that challenge again. It's time to dare to do that thing again. So maybe you enroll in a speech contest or you take public speaking classes or you like you offer to do a presentation at work. Like you volunteer, I don't know how it works in offices, but like you volunteer to give the presentation rather than running away from the nightmares or the stress dreams, face them, like recreate that relationship, show your brain that it's not stressful anymore. Yes, okay. Moving on now for tools that are available to you, we have the six of materials, which is amazing because on one hand, this indicates um, literally like material <laughs> resources that will help you to pursue whatever it is that you want. So if you do not see these material resources yet, the six of pentacles is a huge indication that this will be coming to you very, very soon. So going back to our previous example of this person, what if I can't afford my painting classes? Ah, maybe this is like a bonus coming in or certain expenses that you once had to pay are getting much cheaper or they are disappearing entirely. Um, <clears throat> this is like you guys getting a boost in your financial situation. And actually, this can also talk about assistance. So if I put those two together, financial assistance might be coming for you. So there may be like scholarships or grants or some kind of financial aid that is available to you so that you can do the things that you want to do. And with a little bit of research, you might be able to find these things. There are tools for you. There is help out there for you. Um, but this can also be referring to just like people who are willing to help you in terms of guidance, in terms of advice, in terms of emotional support. Um, we do have two people mirroring each other. So this could be like a friend or someone close to you who is like offering to do this with you. Like, I will, I'll take the public speaking class with you. I'll enter the speech contest with you. I'll do the thing with you. So it's less scary or so that it helps you to enjoy it more so that it feels more like something you can enjoy. If you have a friend or if you have a trusted person there, it can be less scary. Like I'll go to the audition with you. We'll do it together. Um, 
makes you feel less shy it makes you feel less nervous so this this six of pentacles is really saying to me that like you're not alone there's people who do it with you there's people who will help you or there is assistance out there for you and it's it's funny like every little thing that your brain could think of that will go wrong i feel like the six of pentacles is saying like there's a solution for that there's help for that and Again, like the empress that you guys were drawn to, the universe will provide for you any last thing that you need, any little concern that you have. The concerns that you have are valid. I, I want to always be careful with the Nine of Swords not to belittle your worries. But what's important is that you don't let those concerns stop you from going forward altogether. And trust that as you move forward, the universe will address and ease every single one of those little worries or doubts or questions or concerns that you have about your journey. Every last thing will be taken care of. Mm -hmm. So then for your natural advantages, we have the two of emotions. Um, it's so interesting. Like group two, it was a completely different deck completely different card but it was such a similar image there was like an image at the bottom and then the flipped image at the top and they were mirroring each other um this is a card that talks about connections and partnerships i feel like we were speaking about collaboration and then we have these mirrored images and these mirrored images and there's like two people coming together there's like an important person that you will collaborate with, that you will create something with. And even the number threes, like the repeating number threes that were associated with this group, that can also talk about like co-creating something with someone or like giving birth to something with someone. Cause it's like two people come together to make a third. So there's like an important soulmate or just an important person if you don't like that label that you are destined to come together with and make something with and it's giving me like business partner vibes or creative collaborator vibes um you could have a more personal intimate or romantic relationship with this person as well if that resonates with you but the the main thing of like your soul's mission is like you're creating something together you're birthing something to the world together. The six of, pen six of Pentacles, it's like my unofficial soulmate card or like my unofficial second version of the Two of Cups. Um, I've had this interpretation for a long time. Um, so it's funny that these two cards come up next to each other. There is very strong soulmate energy. Or again, if you don't like that label, like someone that you're going to come together with and do something really cool with them. Um, and they could very well be a fire sign, especially a Leo. They could also be a Pisces because we have the moon card here. Um, your natural advantages. I do feel like this soul connection gives you inspiration. It gives you energy and it helps you push through when things are tough and vice versa. But I also think that this is talking about you have an innate ability to connect with people and to understand people. It's like, I don't, I don't know if you read people very well is the perfect wording because sometimes I feel like that has kind of spooky vibes. Like, oh, I'm good at reading people. It's like you see through people. Well, maybe you do. And maybe I'm calling myself out that I find that spooky. <laughs> um, but anyway, you have an innate ability to see into people's soul and to understand people. And so that means when you are creating, you have a way of really, it's like the art that you create or the, the stories that you share or the work that you put out, it goes straight to people's heartstrings. It goes straight to people's soul and it makes them feel seen. They're moved by what you do and they see themselves in what you do. Like you have the ability to create something that is truly relatable. And that's actually something that I see a lot with the moon too, because um, first of all, Pisces energy, it's very beautiful, ethereal, emotionally moving, and it's very romantic and fantastical. Like what you do transports people to another world. 
but it's also related to the 12th house like the collective unconscious like you stir something deep in people's unconscious deep in people's soul i feel like you're really good with like symbolism too i also i feel you have a strong connection to the dream world and to like I don't know it's like to symbols or archetypes that really create like a deep visceral reaction in people you guys might have pisces energy or scorpio energy also gemini and libra energy in your chart or like one placement in your birth chart that's like really significant in those signs but you have a really really good ability of connecting with people of making people feel seen and moving people. I feel like you were born to create. You were born to emote people, if that's the right way to say it, or to make people emote, probably. Like your work is so ethereal, it makes people cry, it makes people's life flash before their eyes, it brings people together, it hits them at a really deep emotional level. and. I think it's really significant that this is coming out in your natural advantages because it just really highlights that this is innate like it's not something you can learn um like if you were a filmmaker you can learn everything about like you know the perfect lighting or like the technique of writing a compelling script or creating a nice set or you know how to make a plot line <laughs> the beginning middle and end you can learn all that technical stuff, but you cannot learn the soul. You cannot learn the emotion. Like that's just something that's in you and that's in you. <laughs> I'm pointing at you. Group number three, I just saw 31, 31 as well. Um, 31 could be a really significant age for you guys if that's coming up um, or this person could be 31 years old. Um, but yes, okay, let's move forward to the Eight of Voices. This is really, really interesting. This is the Eight of Swords, which talks about a lack of confidence, which often leads you to refrain from taking action. It's quite similar to the Nine of Swords. It's this feeling of like your mind holding you back. You're kind of like in a mental prison, like restricting yourself. And a pretty clear message came through to me when this came out. It's like a turning point for you. And it's basically when you're going to be sick of your shit. And, and when I say your shit, I just mean that negative narrative in your head, your negative thought patterns. Um, there will be a time, this could go in two different ways, but I'm seeing the visual of like someone they have an opportunity to like go up on stage and this is a metaphorical stage although it could be literally a stage for you but it's like this is your turn it's your turn to go up there and do your thing it's your turn to go up there and show them what you've got and you are like getting cold feet it's like it's time to show what you're made of it's time to show what you've been working on and you're getting cold feet some of you at the last minute will be like, no, wait, wait, I want to do it. I want to go. And you'll go out there. Others of you will get cold feet. You will not go out there and you will regret it later. Um, another example that's coming to my mind is like going on a really scary roller coaster. This would be like somebody got on the roller coaster and they're like, oh no, no, I can't do it. I can't do it. And they get off. But then, like, just when it's about to start, they're like, oh, you know what, screw it, I'm gonna do it. And they get back on just like off of pure adrenaline and they get on and do it. And they're like, okay, this was actually really fun. Or maybe they, they get off and the roller coaster goes without them. And then they see all their friends having a really good time. And they're like, oh man, like they feel, it's almost like they feel silly, they feel dumb. I'm not saying you are dumb, but it's the feeling of like, man, like I really let my nerves get the best of me and I missed out on this opportunity to have a really good time. And this moment is going to make you guys say like, I'm so tired of this crap. I'm so tired of this nine of swords 
controlling me and getting in the way of my opportunities. I feel like maybe for many of you, this is like missing an opportunity. Like you backed out at the last minute because you were scared and then you realized once your nerves calm down, you realize that you were ready or you realize that I would have had a lot of fun if I just went for it. And you're like, I feel like it's like a breaking point. Like I'm so tired of these negative thoughts getting in the way and I'm so tired of like holding myself back. And it feels like a kind of snapping. And it's really interesting because most of the time when it comes to like healing negative thought patterns, I feel like a lot of the time it's like non-linear and it takes a really, really long time. But this feels just like a, like a clear cut. You're like, I've had it. Well, maybe you've been building up to this moment for a long time. Like you've been close to doing this many times. But it's like this moment that really shows you how this overthinking mindset is harming you more than it's helping you. Because of course, your, your ego thinks it's helping you, right? I'm just trying to keep you out of trouble. I'm just trying to keep you from making a fool of yourself. And you're like, you know what? Nine of Swords, I don't need you anymore. I don't need you anymore. So this is like, you, yeah, you're just like reaching a, a breaking point. You're just like, I've had it, okay? So now we move into changes coming your way and we have the five of wands. Mm -hmm. This is a card that talks about conflicts and it also talks about competition. But I feel like this is you <clears throat> beating out the opposing forces. Like you're beating out your negative thoughts. But I also think you guys could be getting a little bit of a competitive spirit, a little bit of a fighting spirit. And let me tell you something. <laughs> this this um, strawberry quartz that you guys chose, it's also called fire quartz. Um, I have two pieces of this and one of them is more reddish and one of them is more pinkish. So I just kind of decided within myself, I will call the more pinkish one strawberry quartz and I will call the more reddish one fire quartz, even though they're like technically the same thing. Um, but now I'm second guessing my decision because I feel like for this group, you definitely resonate with the fire quartz energy. Like <laughs> I feel like you're being ignited and you're getting this uh, fiery spirit within you. The five of wands is also Leo energy. It's um, something in Leo. Oh my God, wait, wait for it. Saturn in Leo, I think. Um, but anyway, I feel like this is you developing kind of a, a spunky <laughs> and healthy competitive spirit. Um, you used to be in an energy of like comparing yourself to others and letting that comparison like talk you out of doing things like what if I'm not the best what if this what if these people are better than me or like they're younger than me and more successful I don't know why that's something that's that's coming out so much um, I feel like you're not afraid to like try your hand and see how you measure up. You're not afraid to like be competitive. You have a challenging spirit here. You have a fighting spirit here. You're like, yeah, there's going to be, you know, there's going to be obstacles. There's going to be forces or people that might oppose me. I'm going to be in competition with certain people, but let's go for it. So like in the example, of going to an audition. I feel like where past you would have been like, oh, but there's no way I'm gonna be as good as, as these other people. Like I shouldn't bother anyway. Now you're gonna be like, bring it on guys. <laughs> like show me what you got. I bet you I could sing or dance or rap all of you around the block. <laughs> That's definitely not an expression. <laughs> you know, any day of the week I can rap your head off. <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say. I think there's an expression that I'm thinking of, but basically like I can take you. 
I can go for it. Come on. You're like putting yourself out there. Some of you guys might be like entering a contest or entering a competition or going for a very competitive position that a lot of people want, but very few people get. And that doesn't scare you anymore. You're like, watch me. I'm going to be one of those few people. So this is like the fighting competitive spirit that, that I see you guys in, which is good. Okay, so next we have potential opportunities and we have the moon here. Oh my gosh, look at these people. They're like, the moon is so bright, it is blinding them. And I feel like this is you. This is your opportunity to shine. This is your opportunity to be in the spotlight. And what I'm thinking, the moon shines because the sun shines on it. So like something bigger is shining on the moon and lighting it up. So I feel like this is someone like scouting you, like someone bigger than you is scouting you or is like putting, putting people onto you, um, promoting you, shouting you out, like getting you out there. Like you're getting that stamp of approval or getting that backing by a giant. Yeah, that's the word, a giant. For some of you, this giant is your counterpart. This big ass lion, <laughs> this mirroring person. They're like, I'm, I'm you. I'm just a little bit farther along. So let me shine my bigger light on you so you can get your shine too. Um, you will help them in some way too, I'm sure. But this reading is not about them. This is about you. <laughs> this is about you getting your shine. And oh my gosh, you're so bright. I can't see. Uh, <laughs> I feel like this is people being blown away by your talent. You guys are so talented and amazing. All you need is just exposure. People just need to know about you. And they will. Someone bigger is coming to light you up. Um, this could also be like an organization or a company rather than an individual. So like getting, you know, getting endorsed by a big company, getting that backing from a big company, like you're being featured, you're being promoted, your name is getting out there. Okay, so this is the opportunity coming your way. Uh, and people will definitely see you and they will definitely be blown away. You know when you see the full moon and it's really, really big and you're like, oh my God, she's so pretty. And then you take a bunch of pictures of it. I know that's not just me. <laughs> um, you're like that big orange full moon that knocks everybody's socks off. Yeah, we've seen a lot of full moons, but we've never seen a full moon like this one. You really are standing out from the competition. You really are like this fire quartz. I think I need to, I'm gonna like look up some more facts about fire quartz and maybe I'll put little like notes at the bottom here so that you can learn about it or you can look it up on your own time if you feel like doing that. Um, but yeah, okay, so now we have new connections and I love that we have the page of materials here. You are in this page energy and you're bringing in fellow pages. It means you are at the same level. Um, this could be people are, who are around the same age as you or they're just at the same stage in their path. Um, but I love that we have these flowers because it's like you're blossoming together. Some of you guys might be into fashion, like you're in the fashion industry as well this like dress made of flowers, these dresses made of flowers. Um, but these are people who have, they'll be in a similar career path as you, or they would be in career paths such that you can collaborate. And they will be, uh, they'll have a lot in common with you, like common interests, common skills, and also a similar level of drive and similar goals and a similar vision. So it's like very supportive. And again, it's kind of like what we spoke about with this lion. When you're with these people, you feel productive, you feel capable, you feel empowered, you feel hopeful. Um, if you guys work 
for a company or like you work in large groups, like you do group projects, um, this could be representing a really healthy and uplifting work environment as well as class environment if you're a student that you're going to be in. So like classmates and coworkers with whom you really share a vision, with whom you have a lot in common and you can develop a really nice um, friendship with them. These are also people with whom you can share resources like you can share resources for information, you can share like your equipment or share your supplies with each other. So like if this were me, maybe I like meet a bunch of tarot readers and we like share our insights about what the different cards mean or like we introduce each other like, oh, there's a really good crystal shop there. The staff's really nice. You should get this crystal. You know, we tip each other off like this or I have a really good ring light. You can borrow it when you're filming. So you like, what's yours is mine. It's that kind of vibe. We share our resources. We share our things. Um, I know some people have like a taboo about sharing decks, but whatever. It's just for the example. I personally don't mind that. Um, but anyway, that's the kind of people, <laughs> that's the kind of people that you guys are attracting, people with whom you will blossom and you share a lot in common. Um, and I do kind of feel a pretty large group, like a large group that you're working with or like a large class, like at least 10 people, which is kind of cool. So, okay. Now, we talked about this strength card with your new focal points, but yes, this is about you guys feeling a lot stronger now and feeling a lot more secure within yourself and knowing what you're capable of. Like you've really built that confidence and you guys are, you showed so much inner strength because it's like you just made the choice. You made that commitment to say, we're not going to engage with this energy anymore. Like something just shifted within you and you made that choice and that takes a lot of strength and this allows you to see the world from an elevated perspective you see opportunities where you once saw discouragement you see lessons where you once saw failures oh my god that sounds so cheesy i'm sorry <laughs> but you get the picture your your perspective has totally shifted and you're just on an elevated wavelength and you have all of these loyal co-workers, classmates, friends, um, and a loyal counterpart holding you up and your loyal animals holding you up. Mm -hmm. And then finally, we have your final outcome and we have the two of materials, which tells me that you are a multi-talented queen or multi-talented king or multi-talented ruler and you're going to be doing many different things. This is you, you know, you're juggling two roses here. Um, I feel like you guys will have more than one job or more than one source of income or if you do already this is letting you know that they will both be successful so for example maybe at the time of this reading you know you have your main job and then you have like a side job which is not really off the ground yet and this is telling you that you can and will be successful in both and I do feel like many of you guys will have not even just two but like multiple projects going on um, you'll be working on many different things. You'll have, what is it? Have your hand fingers in many pies or something like that and wearing many different hats. Um, and the reason you can do this is because you are so supported and because you get such positive feedback. So I feel you in this really nice flow where yes, you're multitasking and you're working on a lot of things, but rather than it burning you out, it just like feeds you even more. It gives you even more inspiration. And I'm seeing you in this energy where like you're wrapping up a project and you already have your idea and are getting excited for the next one. Like you're just, you're on a roll. So this is like your final energy. And I love that. Okay, so now to close off the reading, we're going to look at a few oracle cards from various decks um, to get our last messages and advice from spirit. So we're starting off with the Aphrodite deck and look at this secret admirers. Hmm. Fire sign, secret admirer. <laughs> My beautiful child, your inner and outer beauty 
attracts a lot of admirers. Some of them observe you from afar because they are too shy. Okay, right away, you guys have like an ex lover or an ex friend who is wow, who is obsessing about you right now. Um, but I think you have it in your head like, oh, they moved on, they don't care about me, but they're thinking about you a lot right now and kind of kicking themselves. Hmm. Some of them observe you from afar because they are too shy. Be aware of anyone who gives you a bad feeling. Not everyone is worth your precious goddess energy. Hmm. Gender neutral goddess, of course. <laughs> Okay, we have give it the time it needs. Um, oh, this is the Inquire Within deck, by the way. And then we have the Flower Medicine Oracle with Iris and Wisdom. So irises tend to talk about like spiritual insights or psychic insights. They make me think of the third eye because of their color and also like iris, like the iris of your eye. Um, so your psychic abilities will help you in your career path or they will help you with your creative projects. Um, I guess, you know, we spoke about the universe working in unexpected ways for you. Patience might be a big thing for you guys. And, and I'm hearing something like instant gratification and this might be something that really like that really like fueled the nine of swords thinking like talking yourself out of stuff because you didn't see immediate results you know like oh like it's not working in the first few tries and then giving up or like talking yourself out of it before you even start just because you're thinking of how long it's going to take or like how much work has to go into it um Almost like you're looking too much at the big picture and then it overwhelms you. And I feel like this little baby is saying like, just take it slow, just take things one day at a time. And it's difficult when, it's difficult when you can, how do I describe it? It's difficult when you can see the whole picture, when you can see the whole vision to then like zoom back in and just take it one day at a time. But I feel like you're being called to bring the focus back to your day to day and your daily habits rather than always thinking about where is this gonna lead in the long term and when am I gonna get to my destination? Let the universe take care of that big stuff. It's, it's simply, we simply can't do it. <laughs> um, we simply cannot predict how exactly everything should happen as much as we might like to but we can control our actions and our habits and the little steps that we take day to day and trust that on the larger scale the universe is guiding us there that was that was hard for me to get out for some reason <laughs> okay Ooh, this card comes out so much like i've only used this deck a few times but i feel like it comes out every time diamond sun body you have a gift that no other can offer you are unique and have your part to play in the creation of our new earth yeah it's time for you guys to share your gifts you're definitely creatives and i feel like you will be a pioneer or you will be some sort of game changer sorry <laughs> i'm sorry that was gross i just had a burp um you will be a game changer in whatever field that you are in. And you have a lot of secret admirers. You might have some copycats. I will just let you know that. And I don't know what you can do about that because that kind of sucks. Um, but I do feel like people will copy you. Yeah. Um, but, you know, take it as, what do they say? Imitation is the greatest form of flattery or something. Like, if someone's copying you, it means that they like your work. And I know it can be kind of annoying, but take it as a testament to the influence that you have. Like, you really inspired so many people. People really saw what you were doing and they were like, yeah, I want that. I want to do that. 
Um, but yeah, that brings me back to beware of anyone who gives you a bad feeling. Um, there will be a lot of people attracted to you because you guys are very attractive from the inside out. Um, and there will be a lot of people trying to get close to you, but it's important to use your discernment, especially for you guys who like you can connect to anyone, you can feel compassion for anyone, you want to see the best in anyone. You got to be careful because when you're being lit up like this and when you're like in your prime and when you're shining, people will try to get close to you because they want some of that shine too. And if there's people who want to like get close to you so they can see how you do what you do and like they're trying to, you know, bite what you're doing, like a copy what you're doing, um, just be careful. And it, like you have to use, yeah, with the iris, you have to use your third eye. You have to use your intuition for that one because on the outside they could appear like super nice, super friendly, but they just want to copy. Hmm. Yeah, be careful. <laughs> um, but there's also a lot of reassurance here that you guys are very beautiful. And again, this is the Empress. That's why you chose the Empress. The Empress is stunning. You guys are very, very beautiful. You're ethereal. You have an ethereal beauty. You may, you may not fit the beauty standards. And I say that with really big finger quotes because beauty standards are dumb and they change all the time. Um, but that doesn't make you any less beautiful. Your beauty is unique and no one can replicate it. And that's, yes, okay. That's why you should not be worried about copycats. Remember what we spoke about with this two of cups? Like you can learn all the techniques and you can do everything right by the book, but you cannot replicate the soul and you cannot replicate the emotion. So even if people were trying to copy what you do, it will fall flat every time. It will not have the same impact. And it's not to say that the people who are copying you don't have talent, but they're doing themselves a disservice by trying to copy you. They cannot replicate your soul. But they also have a soul that if they would just be themselves, then their work would have the soul. But that's not your problem. <laughs> so let them figure that out on their own. Like really, that's not your problem. They have their own journey. They will figure it out. And don't worry, because even if someone tries to copy you and do everything like you, it will not be the same. And people will see right through it they will not be moved by it in the same way that they're moved by you. Okay, that's important for you guys to know. Now, um, I have been looking at the number on this last Oracle card as like it could be an important time frame. The number 14 is making me think of the temperance card. So Sagittarius season could be significant for you guys late November to late December. However, with this 14, I'm also thinking of 14 days. So two weeks. <laughs> Look out for something two weeks from now. The next new moon, because we have the moon here, the next new moon could also be a significant time for you guys because a big key theme of this reading was manifestation and manifesting effortlessly. So um, use the new moon energy to your advantage. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Group number three. These are all the messages I have for you, so I'm going to end your reading here. Thank you very, very much for letting me do this reading for you. I hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching, and I wish you all the best. Please take good care of yourself, stay healthy, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you feel like doing that, and you can follow my Instagram too. Oh, the camera wants to focus on these flames. That's fire again! You guys are on fire. <laughs> but yes, you can follow my Instagram where I also post regular pick a card readings that will be linked in the description as well as in the pinned comment. And I also have a music channel. The song that you guys heard at the start of this video was an original song. So if you're interested in listening to the full version of that song or any of my other ones, the music channel will be linked down below for you as well. Group number three, I'm sending you so much love and much love to your spiritual team as well. Once again, thank you so much for being here. I truly appreciate your support and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.
Hi number fours, so if you guys chose the Trollyite and the Serpent Fire Tarot, this is going to be a reading all about the messages that were meant to find you. So in today's reading, we are going to be using this beautiful tarot board. As you can see, there are 10 different spots to fill in with 10 different cards. Um, basically, these cards in the bottom row here will represent your current situation. These cards up top represent your future. And then this one in the middle is like the turning point, the wake up call, the divine intervention that propels you from your present into your future. So I'm going to briefly explain what each of these spots represent and then we're going to use this serpent fire tarot to fill up the board and then finally at the end of the reading we will take a look at these oracle cards that i have set aside for some additional messages and advice from spirit so this is how it goes we have your current opportunities your current obstacles the tools that are available to you your natural advantages and then as we spoke about before this is like the turning point the divine intervention and then we have changes coming your way future opportunities future connections future focal points and then the final outcome so with that let's shuffle your gorgeous serpent fire deck and get into the messages something there's like a loose thread on my <laughs> clothes that's bothering me okay <laughs> um, okay let's take that one I'm just gonna put this here four of cups so for group number four's current opportunities we have the four of swords interesting okay for your current obstacles we have the page of swords mm. for the tools that are available to you the empress for your natural advantages we have the world for your turning point, your wake up call, your divine intervention. We have the Ace of Pentacles, which looks really, really cool in this deck. For changes coming your way, we have the Seven of Wands. future opportunities we have the four of wands you guys are getting a lot of fours aren't you <laughs> we have three out of the four fours and you guys are group number four. Oh my gosh okay <laughs> for your future connections okay we'll take that nine of pentacles um, okay, no, let's just take the Nine of Pentacles. <laughs> um, but I will remember that we had that little outburst of cards. Future focal points, the Seven of Pentacles. And then for your final outcome, we have the Tower and the Ace of Wands. Okay. So, yes, there is a lot of four action going on here. <laughs> um, maybe you guys are seeing repeated fours, 444. Um, or if you start seeing these soon, it's a sign that you're on the right path. Um, another thing that I want to mention is that especially compared to the other groups when i was shuffling this deck these cards came out very quickly for me when cards are coming out quickly it is always a good sign i have never seen cards fall out really really quickly and it's bad news like literally to this day i have not seen that um and it indicates to me that your spirit guides are happy. Your spirit guides are excited. They have a lot to share with you. And this is going to be a chapter of your life that does move quite swiftly 
or it could be a lot of things are going on at once. It's like your life is picking up momentum. Your life is accelerating. And it's interesting that we have the Four of Swords here as your current opportunity because the Four of Swords does represent a kind of slow or stagnant period or a period of inaction. And so I can almost feel your spirit guide saying like, you may be frustrated at the stillness right now, but trust me, like take this time to rest take this time to reflect because once the ball gets rolling in your life and there is a new very exciting opportunity coming to you very soon like it, it will be difficult to find these still moments um, and it's kind of that grass is always greener feeling like we always we always want what we don't have so i'm kind of seeing someone who's like they've been going through a kind of slow and stagnant chapter of their life and they're like I want change I want movement I want things to happen and then when they get into the chapter where a bunch of things are moving really quickly everything's happening at once they're like man <laughs> I wish I wish that I could have a slow boring day like I wish that I appreciated that time um, and you know it's always just that our brain tends to want the energy that we don't have but if you guys are feeling frustrated with your current slow situation, your guides might be hinting like this is a blessing in disguise and this is supposed to be happening right now because very soon your life is going to start moving very fast. Um, and it is a good thing. I feel like it's a lot of opportunities coming your way at the same time, a lot of changes happening at the same time. So this is like a period to really recharge and reflect on the previous chapter of your life and celebrate that and give yourself a pat on the back for how far you have come. It's funny that the Four of Cups fell out as well at the beginning because these are both cards that I associate with like being quite still and having a lot of free time. So this could also be your spirit guide saying like, you need to take a break. <laughs> you need to take a break. You need to slow down. It's time to rest. It's time to recharge. Um, both of these cards give me vacation vibes, especially when they come out together. The Four of Cups can talk about boredom and having nothing to do, but I feel like in a way your spirit is like craving that. Like, I just want to be. I just want to exist right now and I just want to reflect. I feel like you guys are in like a winter period of your life and spring is about to come, if that makes sense. Um, but also with all of these repeating fours, this is a sign that the divine is working a lot in your life right now. Destiny is working a lot in your life right now. And as a result, there may be some unexpected twists and turns coming to your life because the Four of Cups can also indicate that there's something you're not seeing. So if I put these messages together, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of destiny at play here and there's something you're not seeing. This does feel like divine redirection, divine intervention coming into your life. There is a new opportunity presenting itself to you very soon, but I feel like it's not exactly what you expect. Um, with the Ace of Pentacles here, it's likely that this is a career opportunity or a study opportunity. Um, but it's like not maybe not the exact position you expected or maybe even like a totally different role than what you imagined a different field than what you imagined yourself in or it could even be a location that you didn't expect um it's like different than what you envisioned yourself in but i feel like i feel like the universe is asking you to embrace it so when we talk about the obstacles that are in your way, we have the Page of Swords. And so what this made me think right away is that it's like spirit is giving you this time to relax, to be slow, to recharge, but your mind simply won't have it. I feel like you guys have a very, very active mind. And this is actually the third group of four that the obstacle lies in our mind that lies in our mindset this means you have a mind that moves a million miles an hour you're constantly thinking about something or constantly analyzing something or maybe in some cases you're constantly worrying about something but i i feel like you have 
an active or quite a restless mind. It's like you always want to be thinking about the next thing or moving on to the next thing. Um, and this is not really compatible, I think, with the energy that the universe is presenting to you or is encouraging you to be in. This is like a period of reflection, a period of rest, a period of introspection before the next chapter starts. I feel like you are closing off a cycle and we even have the world here, which being the final major arcana, this is a card that talks about closing off cycles. This is kind of the energy that you guys are in right now. Um, so for the tools that are available to you guys, we have the Empress. So again, with the Empress and the Ace of Pentacles and also the Nine of Pentacles, I'm kind of jumping forward a bit, but there are a lot of strong indicators of this next chapter of your life being very abundant for you. This is going to be a chapter where you are creating and manifesting effortlessly. You are generating wealth and abundance for yourself effortlessly. Money comes to you easily. Time comes to you easily. Freedom comes to you easily. The resources you need come to you easily. And for some of you, this might be a very significant contrast from what you have experienced before. And I think that this might have to do with you guys like realigning to your destined path and this is something that is really different for everybody but i feel like for you guys for group number fours when you are in alignment when you are on the right path things happen easily and when you are feeling resistance when you're feeling like you have to work really really hard just to produce small results there there is some realignment that needs to take place but this next chapter for you guys is an effortless one. And so it's, it's very interesting that we have these messages of like an opportunity coming to you that's different from what you expect or it's, it's different from what you envision for yourself, but you're being encouraged to embrace it. It's like you're being encouraged to embrace that divine redirection because it's actually like realigning you with your soul's purpose or it's, it's realigning you with what your soul is truly longing for right now and maybe this period of rest is even like an encouragement for you guys to reevaluate what it is that you're chasing i feel like some of you guys have just been so like in chasing mode in hustle mode get to the next step mode that you haven't really stopped recently and asked yourself like do i still even want this for myself like is this path still making me happy? I almost am seeing like some of you guys have become like machines where you are just chugging out the next task and just following on this path and you're like in that grind but the universe is encouraging you to kind of stop and look around and say like maybe this isn't in alignment for me anymore maybe this isn't good for me anymore because there is a cycle that's being closed. There's something that's being let go. It's almost like it's time to take stock of your life. You're at like a, a checkpoint in your life. You're at like a rest stop <laughs> on your road trip where you stop and replenish, get some drinks, you go to the bathroom, and you're like, do I still even be wanting do I st wait? Do I still even want to be there? It is on the road to this destination, or do I maybe want to go somewhere else? And then you look around, and all of the signs on the highway are trying to point you to somewhere else. Yeah, it's like stop and look around and reevaluate where you really want to go because when you're on the right path, it will feel easy. It will feel effortless. And there is a there is a big abundance coming to you guys. I think we'll see more of what that is later on in the reading, but there's like big foreshadowing here that a period of prosperity is coming for you guys. So moving on for your natural advantages, we have the world and this is very interesting. I feel like many of you guys will be called to relocate somewhere pretty far away, 
but it's somewhere that you already have some knowledge of or some understanding or some interest in um, because the world is making me think that you guys are like cultured in some way um, you may be bilingual or maybe like you grew up in several different locations or maybe you're just very interested in another culture and you've learned a lot about it and I feel like many of you will be called to this new environment so um, for example, let's say you are like you grew up in the United States, but your roots are from France. So this could be you like being called to move to France. It's like you're already familiar with it. You have family from there. Maybe you know the language and this will be your advantage when the universe calls you to this new environment. I just saw 1616, by the way, um, which is the number of the tower, which is our final outcome, which is about clearing things away or things being cleared away that don't serve your future. So there's a lot. And you guys are the last group, too. There is this really heavy symbolism of walking away from something, of ending something, of letting go of something. I feel like many of you are leaving your current environment. It's time to relocate. It's time to go on an adventure and experience something new. Another example of this could be like, even if it's not your roots, maybe you're just like really into a certain other culture of the world. And maybe you've kind of like casually studied the language or learned a little bit about the place. The Page of Swords is also a card that makes me think of that as well like learning other languages, learning other cultures and things like that. Um, and it, it's time for you to like go to the actual place and be immersed. Mm, interesting. And then like we spoke about before, this wake up call or this turning point is an opportunity. It's a career opportunity. It's a study opportunity. And the Ace of Pentacles brings stability and bring security so you know when we're thinking of making a drastic change like this in our life you know going somewhere very far away or going into a completely new environment that can obviously be nerve-wracking because we have nothing to settle us there or maybe we don't have enough like familiarity or enough comforts there and so this ace of pentacles is saying like here I'll give you this offer that will make you feel secure in this new environment, that will make you feel like you're going to be taken care of, um, that you're going to have, that you're going to be looked after, and that you can secure your future there. So this could very well be a long-term offer, like at least one year, I think, with this Ace of Pentacles, like a position, a contract, a program that has at least a year and maybe would even offer some kind of financial support or like offer help with accommodations like you're really going to be taken care of or like the job has a lot of benefits like uh, like health care or some kind of insurance something like that like this ace of pentacles is saying you will be very very well taken care of in this new environment but there's this there's this feeling like if you're if you're too attached to your current path, if you're too attached to your current comfort zone, like you wouldn't you wouldn't embrace this opportunity or you wouldn't even like perceive of this opportunity. With the four of cups, it kind of feels like it's coming out of left field because um in the traditional Four of Cups imagery, we would see this person staring at their Three Cups and feeling kind of dissatisfied with it. And I feel like this is maybe representing you guys lacking fulfillment in your current situation. And then spirits kind of coming out of nowhere with this Fourth Cup, like, Psst, look over here, I have this offer for you. And I feel like some of you guys, when you get this offer, you're not really feeling it or like, you're either not feeling it or you're like dismissing it or you're like, no, that won't work. Some of you guys have already had this offer or had this opportunity presented to you. Some of you guys maybe rejected this opportunity, but I feel like it's coming back around. And it's, it's interesting that we have the seven of wands as changes coming your way because this is starting to make sense. I feel like 
when fours are so present, when the number fours are so present, um, the universe can be kind of stubborn <laughs> because this is your destiny. And I've, I've spoken about this before a little bit, but I feel like souls kind of choose how present they want destiny to be in their life or how present they want divine intervention to be in their life before they incarnate. So some souls might say like, this is the path I want to go on and universe spirit guides, I want you to be really strict or like really stubborn in, in helping me to get on this path. Other souls might say like, uh, just like see what I do. <laughs> just let me go down there and do, see whatever I do. And I feel like you guys with all of these fours and just with the vibes that I'm picking up from these cards, you have this agreement with your spiritual team. You have this agreement with your universe. Like be stubborn, get me on this path. And if I don't take it the first time, <laughs> keep showing it to me again and again. So I feel like you will be nudged quite a bit by the universe to accept this offer. And you're being, you're either being hesitant about this or some of you have flat out like rejected this offer because next we have the seven of wands with changes coming your way. So this means things are going to get difficult in your life. Things are going to kind of feel like an uphill battle in your life. And this is also a card of resistance. I feel like you guys are resisting the redirection that the universe is trying to offer you or like the opportunity that the universe is trying to offer you. Um, this card is associated with um, Mars as well as the sign Leo. So there's like a little bit of like, there's a little bit of stubbornness going on here or like strong willedness going on here. Um, I should also mention we have Taurus and Libra energy with the Empress. Um, we have Mars energy with the tower and Saturn energy with the world. Um, but the way it's, it's presenting is like, if you don't go on this new path, your current path will start to get increasingly more difficult or increasingly boring or increasingly inconvenient or increasingly uncomfortable. It's like the universe is saying, oh, you didn't, you didn't get the sign. You didn't get the message. Okay, let, let me make it a little bit more obvious <laughs> that it's time for some redirection. So, you know, for example, let's say you guys are in a job that is really not fulfilling you anymore. And so the universe is like, well, here, here's this jo new job opportunity. But it feels kind of random or it feels kind of scary or it's just unexpected. And for some reason, you're like attached to your comfort zone. You're like, yeah, you know, my current job is not the best, but at least it brings me this sense of security. Or maybe you're like, oh, but I'm helping so many people in this job. I don't want to, I don't want to upset them if I leave. It's kind of like you're attached to your current situation for the wrong reasons, out of fear, fear of losing security, fear of upsetting somebody. So it's not out of like a love. It's not like I'm staying here because I love it here. It's like I'm staying here because I'm afraid of, I'm afraid of what's out there. I'm afraid I won't find something better. I'm afraid people will judge me. I'm afraid pe I'll disappoint people. It's like for those kind of wrong reasons, for those fear-based reasons. And so the universe would say, okay, um, I showed you the signs, but it looks like maybe you didn't, get the message because you're still in your current situation. So maybe things kind of hit the fan at work. Maybe those coworkers that are unbearable become even more unbearable. Or maybe your boss who piles too much work on you starts piling even more work on you. Um, maybe little administrative things start to go wrong. And these are all like, this is really, and again, I really want to be careful here that this is like, a case by case situation. This is not a blanket statement for everybody, but I feel like for you guys, the universe shows you it's time to get out of here by like making things hit the fan <laughs> or by making things like uncomfortable, annoying, inconvenient, feeling that resistance. And I feel like some of you, this is even like your current situation and the universe is like trying to tell you it's time to go, it's time to change things. 
because for your future opportunities we have the four of wands this is your destiny this is your calling this is what will make you truly happy and the four of wands also indicates a divine union in this case i really feel like this divine union is talking about you coming into union with your calling and you coming into union with your higher self um, but i will say for those of you watching this reading I know it's not everybody, but for those of you watching this reading who do feel that you are on um, a twin flame journey or something of that nature, I really feel like this redirection is a part of that. It's a part of your divine union. Um, this can also more broadly talk about like marriage. So this could be a redirection um, if you're single, it could be a redirection to the person that you will get married to. Um, but again, this also talks about like a happy home and being happy in your physical environment. So there's a feeling of needing to like physically move, physically go somewhere else. And I think it's somewhere either very far away or very different from where you currently are. Um, but yeah, this is an opportunity to pursue like what is truly going to make you happy. Um, I really think for most of you, this is about a union like with your truest self and your truest calling because we only see one person in this card. Like this is a journey that you make alone. Um, there may, well, no, there will be, there will be others waiting for you and welcoming you and loving you on the other side but it truly feels like you're walking away alone and i'm sort of getting eight of cups vibes um and i just if i'm being honest because i am getting this feeling that fear that you have of like what if what if i upset people what if i disappoint people um you will like some people will be upset when you make this move um so i don't want to tell you guys like oh don't worry like nobody will think anything of it because that's not why you make the change you don't make the change because you won't ruffle feathers like you can't let that stop you people people will feel how they want to feel and that's their right to feel that way but you also have a right to make changes that will serve you better and like it sounds very very harsh but like they'll get over it they'll be fine um you know, like your, I don't know, your boss might be inconvenienced if you leave your job, but you cannot stay somewhere just because you don't want to inconvenience someone. Like your life is worth more than that. And people get over inconveniences and you never know, like in this boss's destiny, it might be a part of their journey and best for their business that you leave and then someone else comes in, someone else who was meant to come in is going to come in um, and make the company better. Like it's time for things to move on. It's time for the cycles to take their course. And you don't know what is best for everybody and you don't know what is part of everybody's destiny. So it's no use in saying like, oh, I shouldn't do this because it's gonna be bad for that person or you don't know that. Like that could be a, a very important part of their growth and their journey. It's the same thing like, if you have, I don't know, let's say you have a friend or someone in your life who's been draining you and you need to move on, but you're like, oh, I feel bad for them. Or like, maybe they need to learn how to heal on their own. Or maybe they need that wake up call. If it's a partner, maybe, maybe they have a soulmate that they need to meet. And I feel like the more you resist your calling, you could actually be like messing with people's path, messing with people's destiny, messing with the karma that people are meant to experience. Let it flow, like go with where you feel the energy is flowing. And if you stop, you can feel it. If you stop and st slow down, you can feel that flow. Don't stay out of fear or don't make decisions out of fear it messes with the flow and the flow is is guiding you somewhere else right now 
to your truest joy and to everybody else's truest joy. Even if in the moment it feels like, oh, I'm letting someone down, I'm causing someone trouble or inconvenience or whatever it might be. It's best for them too in the long run. I feel like this may be a group of people pleasers, honestly, like the more I'm reading this energy. Um, and maybe the reason this opportunity seems so unexpected or why you're not keen on it at first is because it is like a selfish choice. It's something that makes you happy, but you feel like you're like letting down or, or causing trouble for someone else around you. And it feels unnatural for you guys like to put yourself first. Um, with this nine of pentacles, this is also success in your career, um, especially if you're self-employed. And this is you guys being very independent. I feel like I feel like the universe is not ready to divulge what new connections are coming to your life. Although there was a hint for those of you who are like looking for your twin flame or looking for your spouse. There is a little hint of that here. I will say that, but in terms of details about new connections, it's really all about you right now. And we even saw that with the four of wands only having one person, it's really all about you. Um, when it comes to like unions with other people, I honestly don't see that in the near future. I feel like this next chapter of your life is all about connecting with yourself because the nine of pentacles is about like, loving yourself, getting in touch with yourself, being independent, building yourself up, healing yourself, working on yourself. This is the kind of vibe that you guys are in right now. And I feel like many of you guys will be focused on this new opportunity. Um, you'll be focused on your career, building your empire with the Empress, building yourself up. Now, I do remember that when I was shuffling for this card, I think it was like three, three cards that fell out all at once. Um, so there could be three significant new connections that come as a result of this transition. But I also think that that was indicating that a lot of people are gonna be interested in you and a lot of people are gonna be approaching you. Um, while I do think you're making new connections in this time, I feel like you're honestly like really you're in like an introverted energy. If you already are an introvert, you're embracing that side of yourself. And you're like, I really don't. It's like you can't be bothered, I guess, to make all of these new acquaintances or to like invest in all of these relationships. I feel like you have a small but very dear and very precious and very intimate social circle. And it's, it feels like a weight lifted because I feel like right now you guys are in this energy of like trying to entertain so many people or trying to please so many people or like, you know, putting in effort to maintain these relationships that don't really like do anything for you. And I'm almost getting, I'm getting Queen of Swords vibes from you guys as well. I feel like you could be distancing yourself from a lot of people and just making your social life a lot more simple. Like I don't have time for all these people. <laughs> like I just want to take care of myself and take care of my money and take care of my mental health and nurture the few very, very close relationships that matter. And that's your vibe. And you can be very, because of that, you can be very, very present and fully invest in your connections rather than giving like, you know, 10% to a bunch of people, you can really give your full 100% to those who truly matter because you are preserving your energy. Your energy is being like drained out in so many directions right now. Um, but yeah, I think it's like three significant connections for you guys in this next chapter. I think um, there will be at least one that is completely new and that will be very, very significant. Um, so, Moving on for your new focal points, we have the Seven of Pentacles. Um, this is patience. This is patience. This is discipline. This is understanding that good things come to those who wait. Um, I can definitely see how that applies to the first message that we got in this reading, which is like, 
learning how to slow down. I feel like in addition to being a people pleaser, I think this group might have an unhealthy relationship with productivity, which like, same, <laughs> I'm calling myself out here too. Um, and maybe in this mindset of like, I need to do more faster. And I feel like this is you realizing that like good work is done slowly and it's about quality, not quantity. Same with your relationships, but also same with your work and your productivity. I feel like you're living slower in this next chapter of your life and you're living more intentionally. And if you guys struggle to slow down and rest, because it's one thing to get time off, but it's another thing to actually allow your mind to rest and not feel guilty about it and not be thinking about a million things. If you struggle with this, I'm seeing in your future that this is something you'll be able to do easily and effortlessly and without guilt. You will truly enjoy resting and understand the importance of it and actually understand that this is ironically better for your productivity. And I'm feeling maybe there was a bit of antsy energy when it comes to your unions, like especially those of you who are waiting for like a divine union, who are waiting for a partner to come in. I feel like the future you is not restless like this. They're not antsy like this. They're not rushing like this. So, you know, I relayed this message of like, you're slowing down, you're focusing on yourself. It's really about you right now. And there may have been some of you listening to that message who felt resistance and just like want the union to come faster but i feel like the future you does not think like that you know we've seen so much throughout this reading like right from the repeating number four is that like divine timing and your divine plan plays a huge role in your life and i feel like this is you really settling into that and embracing that and knowing that everything will come at the right time like the original image of this card is someone waiting for crops to grow, but they're just like standing there and waiting, like they're waiting for a pot to boil. And this is impatient and this is resisting the natural flow. That's also like a very common theme of this reading. Resisting the flow, struggling with control issues. But the future you is like, if, if the plants didn't grow, it's because it's not meant to grow yet. And when it is meant to grow, it will but I'm not gonna worry about that right now. I'm gonna focus on the plants that are growing right now. Focus on each thing as it comes. I just feel you in this energy like where you're not so anxious for the next thing to happen, which I think is a big change because with the Page of Swords, I saw this really like active and restless mind that's like always wondering what's gonna happen next and like when everything is gonna happen. And that's not, I wanna say like that's not a way to live if you're always like, running somewhere that's why i got this freaking tattoo that says because we're going nowhere because i need to remind myself to slow down like just and just be and that that's something that this reading has said from the start and this is what you guys are really mastering like just taking things as they come taking things slow appreciating the present moment and appreciating quality over quantity so if you guys feel in an anxious or restless or frustrating energy right now and you feel like that's just how you're gonna feel forever, that's not the case. This is you finding peace and stability and embracing slowness and embracing just being. It's like, I don't need to prove anything. I don't need to get anywhere. I just need to be. And then there's this sense of completion. Like, I don't have to chase my wholeness. I don't have to find my wholeness. It's just here. I already have everything I need. And that's it. And you just, and you just let go. So finally, for the final outcome, we have the tower and the ace of wands. Um, the tower, like I mentioned before, it's about things clearing away that don't serve you. It can often happen, um, kind of forcefully or as a divine intervention. So this is not like, this is not like, okay, let's say like, this is a really weird analogy, but let's say you really need to wash your car. This is like, 
the universe making a huge rainstorm happen so that your car is clean. <laughs> it's like the things that need to get done, the universe is gonna make them happen whether you like it or not. It's like that kind of vibe. Yes, it is a little bit scary, but the tower is scary. Um, that was kind of a weird analogy, but I think it works. You know, we spoke about if you're not redirecting to the new path, the universe would make it, your current path more obvious that like, okay, we got to get out of here. And I feel like the tower is representing any last remnants of your old path, any last remnants of things that are out of alignment for you, they will just fall away and you don't really have to do anything. You know, when you think about it, the tower is kind of like effortless because, <laughs> oh, that sounds so weird, but it is like the universe coming in to remove things that need to be removed. And so I'm honestly, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm honestly kind of reading these two cards in a similar energy. I never thought I would say that, <laughs> the tower and the empress, but you really have a lot of divine support here. And it's like, the universe is like, if you don't do it, I will like <laughs> try me. <laughs> so anything that you haven't removed from your life that needs to be removed, um, the universe will remove it. And I know that that might sound scary. Um, and that's because it is because transitions and, you know, drastic changes can be quite scary. Letting go of something that you're attached to and letting go of your comfort zone can be scary. Um, but you will grow from this. And honestly, judging from what we've seen with this energy, I feel like by the time these tower moments come, you will embrace them. You'll just be like, yes, universe, take it away. <laughs> just remove everything that is not serving me. I feel like by the time you're here, you will really, really welcome this energy. Um, a lot of the stuff that's coming in your future, it seems like the version of you right now who is hearing this, like some of you might be wary of it or resistant to it but by the time it actually comes you're in such a different mindset that you're just like yes universe do your thing <laughs> and embracing divine redirection in your life and then we have the ace of wands which is like this beautiful beautiful new beginning so we had this cycle closing off and then we finish off the reading with a new beginning which is really i think that's really beautiful like it's not the end, it's just beginning. The Ace of Wands represents a new beginning for you where you feel very, very energized. And I think especially you guys are gonna be blown away by your own physical vitality and by your own mental clarity and alertness and like zest for life. You're gonna be so full of energy that you didn't even know was possible because for so long being energetically drained because people are taking from you or situations are taking from you. That was like your norm, you know, like it's normal to be foggy or tired. You become like acclimatized to that. So when you feel so vibrant and, and full of energy and alert and focused and creative, oh my gosh, like so many creative ideas just flowing out of you nonstop. You're like, it's like this. I can't believe this can be my norm. I can't believe I can feel this good. I also just got this message of like, someone, and maybe it's just like a couple of you out there, but like someone feels annoyed. Like when they see people who are so like, ah, happy, positive, high vibe, like love and light. Cause you're like, oh, they like, they must be full of crap. They must be faking it. But it's like, then you actually get in that super high vibe energy. And you're like, wait, this is real? Like, I can actually feel like this? I feel like you are surprised with how good you can feel. That's the vibe I'm getting from the Ace of Wands. But I always say with the Ace of Wands, it's like you're seeing a whole new world. You're seeing the world in such more vivid color. You're seeing beauty and inspiration where you didn't see it before. Then with the Nine of Pentacles too, it's like just appreciating the, the simple, beautiful things of life. I feel like some of you guys will really really start to appreciate nature a lot more in this next chapter of your life like every little flower every little leaf <laughs> every little breeze it's so beautiful it's so magical and i see you also being full of creative inspiration even if you don't feel yourself as like a creative or an artist you will be in this next chapter um like you will get into something you'll get into like photography or music or writing or some form of self-expression and for those of you who already are into it 
those creative blocks are gone. You're just like free, free flowing out. Wow. So big transformation we're going through here. I feel like there can be some fear on this journey. There can be some resistance, um, but you're coming out incredibly wise and with so much more appreciation for life and such a huge weight lifted, like all of these things that have been draining you. It's like, I'm not entertaining that anymore. I'm letting go. This is just a huge letting go. Okay. So finally, let's take a look at these Oracle cards from various decks to get your last messages and advice from spirit. So we are starting off with the Aphrodite Oracle and we have intuition. My dear child, I see that your psychic gifts are strong at this moment in time use them this is a good time to get more information about something follow your intuition so this period of slowing down could be very important for heightening your psychic insights because as you guys maybe know when you're constantly in go 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 mode and running around and your mind is very restless it can be hard to pick up on psychic insights because our intuition is usually quite subtle so if your anxiety and your worries and the million things you have to do are screaming in your ear all day it is hard to pick up on your intuition. From the Inquire Within Oracle, we have it's all for a reason. Yes, so this, this basically says it all, that divine direction and divine redirection and divine timing, how and when and the order things have happened in your life, it's all for a very deliberate reason. From the Flower Medicine Oracle, we have Tiger Lily with Wealth. So this fits in very, very well with our Empress, with our Ace of Pentacles, with our Nine of Pentacles. Um, there is great prosperity coming to you guys in this next chapter of your life. Um, this is a wealth of money. This is a wealth of peace <laughs> for sure. Um, this is a wealth of joy. A wealth of beauty in your life you guys could be going through a physical glow up during this process as well it's like I feel like stress has been affecting your physical health or even affecting your physical appearance like it's affecting your skin or it's affecting the way your body looks um, and when you release that stress you get to like embody a physical avatar that you really really enjoy a wealth of confidence as well, for sure. And then from the Starlight Frequencies Oracle, we have, ooh, soul rooms with the number 22. We are unpacking teachings from your soul rooms. Take a moment to be still now during these activations. Mm -hmm. You're processing things and you're purging a lot of energy right now. And 22, 22 is another hint of unions coming your way, but for some reason, spirit has been being kind of cryptic about this union. Maybe, maybe it's not time to divulge too much information yet. Um, but with this number 22, for some reason, I'm thinking of 22 months, which is almost two years, which is there and another, another two. Um, so within, I feel like within two years, you guys will be like completely renewed. You'll be completely in this new beginning. Um, this is less of like a specific time frame and more of something that is like continuously happening. Like you're continuously on this journey over the next two years. And two years from now, you will be completely transformed. So. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, there's only one minute left on the card. Okay, group number four, these are all the messages I have for you, so I'm gonna end your reading here. Thank you very, very much for letting me do this reading for you. I hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching, and I wish you all the best. Please take good care of yourself, stay healthy, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you feel like doing that, and you can also follow me on Instagram where I post regular pick a card readings that will be linked in the description as well as in the pinned comment. I also have a music channel, so the song that you guys heard at the beginning of this video was an original song so if you're interested in hearing the full version of that song or any of my other ones the music channel will be linked down below for you as well group number four i'm sending you guys so much love much love to your spiritual team as well once again thank you very much for being here i truly appreciate your support and i'll see you guys in the next one Whew, we did it
Bye.